Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to our April 1st meeting. I'm not going to say April Fools. Not a good thing. <laughs> so great to see everyone here tonight. Uh, I'd like to have an invocation led by Mr. Uh, Reverend Ryan Bagu. Please stand. Thank you all for the invitation. Obviously, my goal tonight was to be the most fancy dressed pastor ever to lead an invocation. <laughs> But I appreciate it. I just love baseball practice. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that I love about our town is just the way that there's so much connection and opportunities as leaders and as people in the community to serve. And um, this is a, a blessing to be able to come and be a part of tonight, but also a blessing to uh, be a pastor in, in such a great town. So would you all pray with me? Father, I love you, and I thank you, God, for your goodness. Lord, yesterday was just such a reminder that, Lord, um, God, we... We needed you more than we ever realized. And God, we thank you, Lord, that your son came to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. Lord, and that's to live a perfect life. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have in him because of the resurrection. Father, thank you for our town and just the blessing of being a part of community, Lord, that um, Lord cares about one another. Lord, I pray that all that we say and do in our business, Lord, would honor you. Lord, I thank you for our leaders and those that have stepped forward because, Lord, they're not doing it for the money. They're not doing it for the fame. They're doing it because they care. And, Lord, I pray you give them wisdom. Lord, for all the homeowners that are here tonight and the landowners, Lord, that are making decisions under the other leaders, Lord, God, help them to see, Lord, what would be best for our community, not best for an individual, but, Lord, what would be best for the whole. Lord, we ask you to bless this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mr. Kersler, are you going to do the Pledge of Allegiance for us? <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Silva, will you call the uh, roll, please? Certainly. Mayor Roddenroth. Here. Vice Mayor Thompson. Here. Councilman Brown. Here. Councilman Hart. Here. And Councilman Love and Dusky. Here. All present. Thank you. Uh, could y'all please turn your cell phones off? Uh, do we have any public comments? No, ma'am. No? Nothing has turned into me just yet. Okay, great. So moving to uh, number two here on the list, mm -hmm. resolutions and ordinances. We have two. Uh, I will entertain the motion to approve resolution 2024-01, the Jordan Cooper Memorial Scholarship Fund 5K run road closure request. I'll make that motion. Second. Sorry. Any discussion? All, all in favor say aye. 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 We are approved then for the Jordan Cooper Memorial Scholarship Fund 5K run. Next is uh, Resolution 2024-02, the Lake Region Kiwanis Club Parade Road Closure. I move approval. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 5-0. Next, we have a proclamation for water conservation proclamation to Mr. Doug Conkey. Would you please come up? Proclamation by the city of Keystone Heights, Keystone Heights, Florida. Whereas water is a basic and essential need of every living creature and whereas the state of Florida water management districts and the city of Keystone Heights are working together to increase awareness about the importance of water conservation and whereas the city of Keystone Heights and the state of Florida has designated April typically a dry month when water demands are missed acute Florida's water conservation month to educate citizens about how they can help save Florida's precious water resources and whereas the city of Keystone Heights has always encouraged and supported water conservation through various educational programs and special events and whereas 
Every business industry, school, and citizen can make a difference when it comes to conserving water. And whereas every business, industry, I'm sorry, I, missed, I think I skipped something. Uh, whereas outdoor irrigation comprises a large portion of water use, the city of Keystone Heights will encourage citizens and businesses to focus on improving outdoor irrigation efficiency. Now therefore, be it resolved by the virtue of the authority vested in me as Mayor of Keystone Heights, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of April as Water Conservation Month. Keystone Heights, Florida is calling upon each citizen and business to help protect our precious resource by practicing water saving measures and becoming more aware of the need to save water. For this, the day 26th year of Water Conservation Month, there will be special focus on improving outdoor irrigation efficiency, duly adopted and proclaimed on this first day of April by the city of Keystone Heights. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much uh, for your support in this uh, fantastic endeavor that's uh, proving more and more valuable every year as the city, as the Flor uh, state of Florida grows, 1,000 people come in every day, and yet the, the pool of water, that nice low cost, high quality water below us is only a finite supply. So conservation plays an important part. As it uh, mentions in the proclamation, this is the 26th year, so for over a quarter of a century, the state of Florida recognizes the importance of water conservation. As the theme, outdoor irrigation efficiency is vitally important. Uh, as we build homes after homes after homes, we find that your typical Florida home is going to be using 50% of their water outside the house. So irrigation obviously is a low-hanging fruit that produces huge returns when we want to make sure we don't want to be watering the streets or the driveways because no matter what we do, the grass won't grow there. Uh, we want to make sure if there are leaks, you catch them. The head-to-head -head spacing is correct. And that little black box that everybody sees in their garage, learn how to use it uh, and manage it uh, to be able to uh, regulate the water use. Uh, you will have seen, I left some magnets up there that you can use to put your dental appointments or your favorite recipe on the uh, refrigerator. But also, uh, we have now gone with the daylight savings times going to the, uh, two waterings a week. Uh, but when it's rainy or wet, get, put a rain gauge out there. The technology is great. You see water in the gauge, meter goes off. Uh, I use one myself, so that way even a Navy, old Navy pilot won't screw up that technology. Uh, conservation does matter, though. Uh, and there's no one best choice, but conservation of all the options that we are facing is the cheapest and produces almost one third of the savings. Obviously, other things we want to do is protect your ecosystems from those drawdowns on those valuable uh, wet, uh, wetland systems. Uh, if you know of somebody who has a consumptive use permit, those permit applicants have to pr uh, produce a conservation element. Even the fair, which is about to start, they have a cup there at the fair Lo and behold, didn't know that, but it's coming due, so they will have to produce a conservation element. And obviously the utilities that provide us water, that's very, very important. Agriculture is a very important aspect. We have a very robust cost share to make the farmers more efficient with the use of their water, and at the same time reduce nutrients that are bleeding off into tributaries and impacting other waterways. Uh, residentially, we've talked about smart controllers, indoor plumbing, water sense, uh, and Energy Star, all our uh, products that will reduce the level of uh, water. Uh, reducing the, uh, the turf and using a little bit more Florida friendly landscaping. You can make a yard and a house look beautiful if landscaped correctly and not have to put all that water onto your turf. Down here it's great because down here, uh, St. Augustine is not really what you need down here and the Bahia is very uh, healthy in the sandy environment. Commercially, we ask our commercial customers to utilize alternative water supply. Use the lowest 
quality water in their irrigation practices. And what you quite often find, if they get to be bigger businesses, stormwater harvesting, use that water. We're finding uh, big neighborhoods now, like the Nocatees of the world, are starting to use stormwater harvesting. As you begin to grow here as a community, you may find opportunities for some stormwater harvesting. Not lake harvesting, because I know that's a sensitive topic, but stormwater harvesting uh, is very valuable. Uh, we also produced 237 projects to date, totaling $38 million, and that saves 23.5 million gallon, gallons of a day of water. Our most spectacular stat, though, is you've heard about the artesian wells and the aggressive play we have put in recently to plug unused or abandoned artesian wells. Those are free-flowing wells, just wasting water if they're not properly capped. Since 1983, we have capped 3,099 wells to the tune of $9 million, saving 792.1 million gallons of water a day. Now that is a huge statistics that is really helping uh, the St. John's River Water Management District. So again, I want to thank you so much for your support. Uh, I have, have ready for any questions. I know you have some uh, other water discussions here, so I'll be here to kind of help answer any questions or just make note of what's going on because you are one of the biggest projects going on in the state right now. And as I came down Blanding, I was looking at it all the way down here is uh, piping water from Black Creek, 17.5 miles down to an engineered media. Basically, it's the Mac Daddy of, Mac Daddy of filtration just down Treat Road on the southern part of Blanding goes through a filtration system, taking some color out, taking some nutrients out into Alligator Creek, into Lake Brooklyn, recharging the aquifer, a healthy aquifer helps push the lake levels up, and you are now a booming metropolis. <laughs> so again, thank you again, and uh, you have a wonderful day, and again, thank you for your uh, support with this proclamation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, next is our consent agenda and I'd like to make a, a motion to approve uh, we have several meetings identified here and for you it all in the crowd and listening online a lot of uh, the minutes uh, all the minutes have been caught up and are accessible on our website they're still embedded in our agenda packet so you may have to look for that meeting if you're trying to see specifics um, we got some changes coming forward with all of that but for now, they're part of a big packet. But um, these are basically all the meetings uh, back to 1st of January, minutes, et cetera, that are listed here. So can I make a motion to approve these minutes? I'll make a motion we approve the consent agenda. I get a second? I'll second. All in favor? Wait, wait. Oh, oh I'm sorry, in discussion. Yes, Go ahead. I was able to review most all of these. <laughs> okay. And um, thank you to the city clerk for making those corrections. I appreciate that. But the March 4th, I yes. was not able to review. Um, under roll call, councilman is misspelled. <coughs> and under public comments, we are using um, past tense for all the public comments, except in one instance where Metalia Figueredo, uh, sorry, I can't pronounce the name, but we're using present tense there. Not a problem, that would be changed, sir. Thank you very much. I just have an observation. We can't really comment or vote on the, the contents of the heritage of the planning, but I think we can approve the form that they used. Is that correct, Council? I, I think, yeah, we're just approving the minutes. The minutes. We're not uh, well, authorizing. But we, but we weren't there, so I'm just saying that we can, we can approve the form that they used. We can't necessarily approve the content. I'm confused. <coughs> I do apologize. For that. No, that, that, that is how it's been. Yeah, I, no, I understand, and I think so council agrees sure. with that. I'm not, I'm not debating the the, the motion mm -hmm. itself. I'm just clarifying it, just from a legal standpoint. You, you're talking about the, the way the form is, the I, context. No, I, no, I'm saying, I'm saying we weren't at those two meetings, so we mm -hmm. cannot say that yes, this is exactly what they did. Yeah. But we do, we are approving the way they're setting it out. Right, you're you're, a form. you're approving that they're an extension. <coughs> That's right, as an appointed board. That's right. They, they approved their own minutes, presumably, at their meetings. Right. Yeah. So, that's how much. Any more discussion? Thank All you. in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We have approved the minutes. 
Okay, next is financials. Um, the Life South Blood Drive event application for July 14th. So, so normally when you approve the consent agenda, it's everything A through D. Right. So it's all approved. It's all approved, right. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. All those individual things. I'm sorry. I saw the, there's so much on here this time. <laughs> there, there's it's a, a lot of stuff on there's here. There's a lot of yeah. stuff on here this time. So basically it is the minutes for the crowd, financials, the Life South Blood Drive event application for July 4th, and the 2023 roadway improvements project number 171759. And just to clarify, there were actually no financials in this. Correct. Okay. Correct. So we're good, right? We already voted. We should be good. <laughs> Sorry about that a little bit of detail there. Okay, action items. Um, I would like to ask Mr. Paul Wayne to please come up. And uh, it's about the July 4th introduction. Hello, Council. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank My you. My name for is being Paul here. Wayne. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Paul Wayne. Uh, I'm a, a member of a band called Duval County Line. Uh, some of you may have seen me on television playing the national anthem for the Jacksonville Jaguars Titans game. Thank you. Life's been a whirlwind since then. Um, uh, but more importantly, uh, my beautiful Lisa and I uh, run a program called Guitars for Kids Rising Stars program where we uh, gift new and refurbished instruments to really anyone who has the desire to play music, but mostly, of course, children. The school system seems to be taking that away from them, and I want to make sure they have a chance to play music and express themselves. Once a child receives an instrument from the Guitars for Kids program, they become a rising star for life. At this point, there are somewhere between 250 and 300 of them. Um, and what it does is it basically, um, it, it improves their home life, their focus, it gets the phones and the game controllers out of their hands for a while and lets them be creative and do something with their own minds rather than following someone else's lead. And it has shown to be positive all through this community. We've been invited to play for the July 4th uh, uh, program that you have going on. My band Duval County Line is going to come down and play. We'll provide all the sound, the lights, the whole thing that it that, that, that takes to run a stage. Um, and we're also going to invite some of our rising star bands. You know, some of these kids have, not, not, not only do they become rising stars for life, there's a place where they can go uh, as a community of kids to help each other with schoolwork, help each other learn how to play music. They build bands together. They, it gives them a focus and uh, a place that they can be in control for a little while every day rather than being told what to do constantly. And it, it really has improved all of these young people consistently. So we're honored to be here. We're, we're, we're honored with the opportunity to show you what it is we do. Um, and we thank you for having us, first of all, first and foremost. Uh, this is my very first presentation to a city council, so I'm... <laughs> You're doing great. I, and I'm, apparent, I'm apparently the only hippie in here. <laughs> well, I would be if I could grow yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, no. one of the most famous statements on the, the radio program, uh, when I woke up the next day after the Jags performance, uh, I had gone viral on four different platforms. I was in Guitar World Magazine, USA Today, all the NNs and ABCs and NBCs. I was all over the place. ESPN televised it, so 40 million people saw it. And uh, one of the most famous statements was uh, a radio DJ asked me, uh, how long have you been working on the mullet? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to go with an honest statement and say, it's not a mullet, it's a receding hairline. <laughs> so, uh, but the reality is that we're, we're doing all we can to help these kids uh, focus. And, and give them something to hang on to. So we're gonna bring some of our rising star bands with us. Some of the kids are gonna play. We've had a band called Shopping Mall Gorillas. <laughs> we, I don't know where they came up with that. We've got a band called uh, Bad Decision. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, and another of our rising star bands, one I'm so very, very proud of is called Midnight Sun. And uh, they've pushed forward with the support of the community and their parents and their classmates, peers, 
Uh, they've opened for bands such as Molly Hatchet and Red Jumpsuit Apparatus and, and bands like that. And these kids are 14, 15 years old. So they're getting a chance to do what I wish I had a chance to do when I was their age. So what we do is we provide quality instruments. We run all of them through a master luthier shop, make sure that it's the best toolkit they can get to go to work with, and we give them a fair shot at it. Um, again, I don't know exactly where I'm going with this, but I do just want to say thank you so much. I'm humbled by your graciousness, your kindness. I thank you so much for the opportunity to show you what it is we do, and so you can see these kids shine. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, uh, I, I host full band open mic jams. I don't know if, if everyone knows what that means, but what we do is we provide the entire sound system, the instruments, everything. You're all welcome to come and play my custom guitars from the luthier shop or all the custom stuff that's on the stage and really show off with a light show and a full sound system every Thursday night at the Howlin Wolf in Putnam Hall, uh, right down the road. Mm -hmm. Putnam, I like to call it Putnam Hall by God, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and that's every Thursday night from 6 till 10. And everyone is welcome. It is a family-oriented place. We call it the Wolf Pack. The Wolf Pack has been there. They have shown up and shown their love and support for this program and for what we are trying to accomplish consistently for the last four and a half years. That uh, Every Thursday night I've been there. Um, <clears throat> The Wolf Pack doesn't just show support for the kids in the program. Um, we've had several kids come through the program with special medical needs, special educational needs, and the Wolf Pack has always stood up and made sure that those kids had what they needed. Um, some situations are glorious and joyous, some not so much, but they always show up. And so if, as the community, as, as the council sees, that's a that's a good place. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's full of good people, and we love them very much. And they love this community, and they show it all the time, all the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you guys for having us. Thank you. So, Mr. Zit Van Zandt, can you give me an airport update? Can I yes, ask a question on that real quick? Yep. Yeah. Um, Mr. Hart, yeah. you're the July 4th go-between right now, as far as I know, right? Mm -hmm. You're the person mm -hmm. right that knows the most? <laughs> <laughs> I know the most. <laughs> I, I, I'm not the go-between, uh, but what, what's your question? Uh, are we going to pay them to yes. play on July 4th? I would imagine so. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> I'm the yeah. Yeah. Mr. Brown and I did a walk of the facility. Good and bands don't, don't play okay. for free, I'll tell All you. Right. That. I just want to make sure we got care. money flowing in their direction. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Is, is, is your mic, is it an open mic? for? for would you let a horn player sneak? Absolutely. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any and every musician is welcome. Okay. It is not a karaoke. We don't do that. <laughs> but if you can play and you want to jam, what about you disco? come on. Man. How about some disco? <laughs> you come on with it. Sorry, no, you're okay. It's okay. Great. Mr. Van Zant, would you give us an airport update? Please? Yes, ma'am. Um, a, a lot has been said about um, the airport and its lease to the firm, which is a non-aeronautical tenant of the Keystone Heights Airport. And um, I don't have a... Uh, preconceived opinion one way or the other, but I would like to just inform the council, the public, everybody that's been following this uh, as the fact of the fact, as I understand them with 30 years of dealing with the FAA in America, in the Middle East, Germany, and they are a huge federal government institution, the Federal Aviation Administration. They require that your airport authority, and this is not unique to 42 Juliet Keystone Heights Airport, this is every airport in America, the FAA funds with uh, millions of dollars of grant money every year, all these airports. Mm -hmm. So when you have a lease, um, regardless of who you are, this really has very little to do with the firm. 
This has to do with the FAA requiring fair market value. They will not allow themselves to spend the money that they spend and then have an airport uh, do a less than fair market value sweetheart deal, whatever you want to think of it. So I wanted to say those things out loud to you. It is also proper when you go um, for a non aeronautical tenant on any airport. Again, this is not unique to the firm, not unique to Keystone, to get a fair market appraisal, especially when you haven't had one in 25 years. Um, and the FAA, uh, more so than the Keystone Airport Authority or any tenant, is going to be the predominant um, decision maker in this whole scenario. So that that's just kind of the 50,000 foot overview. If that normalizes anything or has created any questions, I will uh, try to answer them. And I've got the airport uh, manager and the head of the uh, authority here. Um, but you as council have been engaged. The Clay County manager received some correspondence called down to see if he needs to come to an airport <coughs> meeting. Really, you've appointed your airport authority and you'll appoint a couple more members tonight and this is really their their football game to play here thank you mr Vincent. okay just a few other highlights um ongoing work uh at the airport is happening to uh resolve the firm's lease um we had a great couple of days uh with the snowbird aerobatic contest out there just some, some beautiful airplanes doing some really cool aerobatic flying. Um, we have what's called an aerobatic box above our airport, so when that airspace is uh, uh, reserved for aerobatic use, then we can do those kind of things. Um, there's some tentative dates of April 5th and 6th for some aviation medevac training going on out at the airport. Um, we expect an uptick in kind of commuter traffic heading down to Fun and Sun, Sun and Fun, which is in Lakeland each year. Um, and this year it happens to be between the 9th and the 14th. Um, so we <coughs> get a little bump in fuel cells as people are heading that direction from all over landing and getting a tank of gas and eating a hot dog and doing their flight planning and moving on. And um, that you, you've got, all got a, a copy of of the propeller terms mm -hmm. and we have some others if anybody in the uh, audience would like them after the meeting so that's what's going on with your airport um, and uh, just wanted to make that up to you thank you appreciate you clarifying the details with regard to the firm i'd like to ask mr bill prang the airport man engineer to please come up uh, inside of our packet is the airport utility feasibility study Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, members of council, citizens. Um, I think you have this package, and I uh, provided a couple of slides. I want to point out this is a draft document. It's the draft final document. This task started in uh, early 2022. The uh, task was funded jointly by city council and the airport authority. Uh, the city council paid the first $110,000 of the task, and the airport is paying the remaining $25,000. The total task uh, is $135,000. We're in probably the last 5% of the effort at this point. The document, this document was distributed about a month ago to uh, our stakeholder group that's been involved in all the technical memos that have been released. That includes uh, Bradford County, um, the city, the airport board members, and Clay County Utility Authority. In fact, Clay County Utility Authority was kind of the catalyst for this. You have to go back to your prior city manager and the prior airport manager, both of whom were actively involved in talking to CCUA about extending water line and sewer line to the airport. Uh, this goes back three or four years ago, and the CCUA reps engaged in a couple of meetings and the general consensus of that was that CCUA was interested and possibly able to extend water and sewer to the airport, but they needed real numbers. 
So this report attempts to set forth real numbers for three categories of uh, what are normally considered underground utilities. Potable water, sanitary sewer, which is also referred to as wastewater in the report, and fire protection water. Fire protection water is a bit of a unique animal for an airport, and I'll just, before I get to the section on fire protection, I'll explain that now so I don't forget later. Aircraft hangars, particularly aircraft hangars that are large, where the entity occupying the hangar is doing either maintenance work, paint work, <coughs> welding, air, airframe work, uh, the NFPA code requires those hangars to be sprinklered, and there's a very high flow and pressure demand for a sprinklered hangar building. So uh, as I get to those numbers, uh, I'm trying not going to have too many numbers tonight. I'm not really a numbers guy. I'm not the utility engineer who did this work. Uh, but if you have specific questions about any how, of how the flows were generated, um, I can either answer them or write the question down and respond in writing. So that's where we're headed tonight. Um, the first graphic I brought to show tonight is really just a representation of the existing airport layout plan. And if you look to the right and to the left of the airport uh, graphic, you'll see for, for no, terms of nomenclature, we designated the existing airport usage as east side and the area uh, in Bradford County as west side. Um, it's not an official naming, but we had to have some way to designate where most of the existing hangars and aircraft activity is occupied on the east side. And then the west side, which is where a new road is partially built and a west side development area is being planned and developed. So that's, that's that basic distinction. Um, next, please. I'm sorry, I don't know who's running this. Thank you very much. This is the same graphic, but you can see in green a number of uh, short-term and mid-term projects that are planned at the airport. This, this green, the, the green buildings are hangar buildings predominantly, and the larger green facility on the west side is what is currently proposed as a uh, multi-structure hangar, warehouse, and office complex that MHD Rockland has planned. Uh, you can see it's large in size. That's, that would be an example of a large hangar that fits three uh, P3 aircraft for a full range of um, aircraft maintenance activities inside the hangar. Um, again, just to clarify, the only thing that's been constructed in the west side right now is uh, slightly over a mile long. Uh, Bradford County built uh, a portion, 98% of the west side service road. It's not yet connected to State Road 100, but they've received permission to do that. And as soon as the airport can reconfigure their perimeter fence, that road will be connected to State Road 100. That's a, uh, if you will, the beginning of what will eventually be uh, light industrial and commercial and aircraft use area on the west side of the airport. Uh, all right, potable water, let's start there. Drinking water, if you will. The um, existing CCUA potable water system exists of a, um, I think one more slide, please. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. This is a depiction of existing CCUA facilities in the vicinity of the airport. The green line represents the uh, sanitary sewer station, which is uh, generally located adjacent to and behind the Clay County, uh, the Clay Co-op, Electrical Co-op headquarters. And then the green line that uh, follows the State Road 100 right away is a uh, six inch um, sanitary sewer force main. The sanitary sewer force main um, terminates at roughly the intersection of State Road 100 and I believe locally you call it Speedville Road. Uh, the blue line is a 12 inch CCUA water line, potable water line. It also terminates in generally the same vicinity and for the most part it follows the right of way although on the western or northern extreme it uh, diverts off of State Road 100 and follows another path. Um, you can see too in the upper part of the graphic is the air location of the airport identifiable by the large grass triangle area which is uh, the footprint of two existing runways and a former runway in the 1940s. The next graphic shows um, some planned development 
for which information was provided to us specifically at the request of CCUA. Makes sense that if, if CCUA or some other entity is going to extend water and sewer to the airport, it would need to be designed and sized to serve any other development that might occur along the same corridor. In fact, I can tell you one outcome of the study is the demand for water, potable water and sanitary sewer at the airport is very small compared to other demands that appear to be coming onto the CCUA system for other development. The other development that uh, is shown there in pink, I'll start at the top of the graphic. There's a future subdivision and a, a gas station convenience store that's planned. There is near-term and long-term expansion of the Keystone Heights RV Resort and another gas station and convenience store in that vicinity. There's a planned um, subdivision called Country Meadows. And then down in the right-hand side is a uh, future commercial circle development. Um, we obtained information about these facilities by talking to those developers and again with the help of the former city manager and former airport manager was where we obtained those plans. I don't think we have any private information about that. It was information that was otherwise readily available from the developers. Um, so potable water. At the airport, the potable water demand for future build out of the airport is 117 gallons per minute. That's the peak uh, potable water demand that we determined for the airport. The potable water system, next slide please, sorry. The potable water system we have designed is basically a split system. On the lower left of the graphic, there are two connections to a future CCUA owned 12-inch uh, water main uh, at each of the roads that feed the airport. One goes uh, on the lower side of the graphic up into the east side and the other connection point would serve the west side. There is, uh, both of those are six inch water mains on airport property. There is a four inch water main that cross connects between them that would serve the uh, development parcels that might develop along that crossover road that's not built yet. And it also serves as some redundancy if for some reason one of the connection points had to be closed you would have cross connect between the west side system and the east side system. Again, for those of you that don't do potable water design, 117 gallons per minute is a relatively small number. Okay? Um, again, let me, let me just point something out. Potable water and fire water are two completely different demands. It's both water, but the fire demand is far exceeds what Clay County Utility Authority could provide with their system. So I'll tell you in a minute how there will be an independent fire water system on the airport. The next is sanitary sewer. Next slide, please. So the wastewater follows essentially the same pathway, a dedicated line on the west side and a dedicated line on the east side. Both of these sanitary sewer services are a combination of gravity uh, where gravity works and where gravity does not work, meaning it has to be pumped uphill. We use lift stations and pumps and force mains. There's uh, an extension of the Clay County utility line, a six inch force main extension, all the way out to the new intersection at Southeast 81st and the new Bradford County Road that was built. And again, a combination of gravity and um, sanitary sewer force mains <coughs> for those two systems. Um, again, the sanitary sewer demand is relatively low. The peak demand is 100 gallons per day at future airport build out. Again, in, in numeric values, that's a relatively small demand. In fact, again, the demand for all the other development along within the city and along the corridor from Speedville Road to the airport far exceeds 100 gallons per day. Now, you might ask, uh, what are we going to do about that? Um, we are aware from talking to Clay County Utility Authority that they already have in their 2023 and 24 budget a project to uh, begin design and extension of their wastewater treatment plant and to evaluate the size and routing of their existing force main uh, to see if it needs to be increased or uh, if additional lines need to be installed to meet demand that's not associated with the airport. 
I'm not really prepared to talk in detail. I, we don't work for Clay County Utility Authority. We just know that in cooperating and coordinating with them, they gave us that information along the way and we included it in our report. Let's talk about fire protection on the next slide, please. The airport currently has an above ground water storage tank that's served by a dedicated well. It's on the east side of the airport in the T hangar area, far right, top right of the graphic. Um, the, uh, that's, a, that's a common way for airports with T hangar and corporate hangar clusters to provide fire protection. None of the hangars now is internally sprinklered and the hangar development on the east side continues to be additional T hangar buildings in the future and corporate hangars. A corporate hangar, you might also hear it referred to as a bulk hangar. It's a rectangular or square hangar in the, in the neighborhood of 60 by 60 to 80 by 80, give or take. It's typically dedicated to one corporate tenant, either a business or some type of operator that owns multiple aircraft. That's opposed to the T hangar layout, which is a long rectangular building where private pilots who own one airplane store their single airplane. The demand on the east side is in the future for a fire flow of 2,250 gallons per minute at 20 PSI. That's considered a low pressure system. So the future fire protection on the east side would be supplemented by a new eight inch well, additional storage take capacity uh, up to 270,000 gallons of above ground water storage, a new uh, diesel generated uh, diesel powered fire pump system and replacement of the existing eight inch fire hydrant line with a 12 inch hydrant line. On the west side, because the proposed MHD hangar is so much larger and because some of what could be potential development in the west side would need additional pressure, we're planning a high pressure system, 6,000 gallons per minute at 109 PSI. We just give you those numbers again so you can see the range of magnitude. The low pressure system is 2,250 gallons per minute at 20 PSI. The high pressure system is 6,000 gallons per minute at 109 PSI. If I could just give you a layman's explanation as to why that is, when you have a large hangar that's maybe 450 feet long and 100 feet deep and is built tall enough to accommodate a 45 foot tail height on an aircraft, you have to have a pumping system that's strong enough to pump water all the way up to the roof of that hangar so it can distribute water down onto the hangar floor area. So you have to overcome that head pressure. That's why there's more water, there's a larger space and a higher pressure that's required. The proposed west side high pressure system includes a new eight inch well, 300,000 gallons of storage and uh, 12 inch fire main with hydrants to serve tenants that are along the uh, west side service road. The overall construction cost at this point, this is a preliminary study. This is what we would call a, a class three estimate, meaning the range <coughs> on the cost estimate is minus 10% to plus 30%. The, uh, the estimate is at uh, just above $17 million to design and build out the whole system. Um, in including a contingency and the class three order of magnitude range. I think you should be thinking about this project as something in the 22 to 23 million dollars. And I know somebody's going to ask, how are we going to pay for this? Save that question. Uh, anybody have any technical questions either about the existing layout, plan development, or potable water, wastewater, or fire protection. So I read 78 pages of the technical <laughs> document, and I'm an engineer, yeah. and I'm very impressed with your work on the technical level. It's the non-technical stuff that I have a lot of questions about. Okay. So thank you for excellent work on technical analysis and um, planning. What are your other questions? I'll do my best to try to answer them. Well, you just answered one of them, which was the $17 million cost at minus 10% to plus 30%. Where, where are we going to get that kind of money? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, we were not tasked with 
developing a costing or a financial capital plan for the project. Uh, but I've been in a number of meetings. This question comes up all the time. Um, again, you're the prior airport manager and the prior city manager wrestled with this question. Um, I don't want to say that it was parked until later, but CCUA was not interested in talking to us again until we presented them numbers like gallons per day, gallons per minute, flow and pressure numbers. Um, I don't believe they would fund all of the project, but they may fund part of the project or be willing to partner with other stakeholders to fund part of it. I have a document from one of my colleagues that uh, I apologize, I forgot to print it, but I have it here and I'll provide it to Mr. Van Zandt so he can distribute it. But there are sources of funding for projects like this that municipalities rely on all the time. Some of them are state funded. There's a state revolving uh, loan program that offers um, low, uh, in, low interest rate loans. The DEP has a program for small community wastewater facilities. Um, the DEP also has a program for water quality improvement grants. There's sometimes federal Clean Water Act grant programs. And uh, it's also possible that uh, with the right combination of um, retiring septic systems and removing small well systems from the airport over time, that the water management district might also participate in some cost sharing. So we've not approached any of those agencies. Again, repeating also the previous city manager mentioned that we're probably, whether you agree with this or not, philosophically, we're in a season in the United States where the federal government seems to like to write big checks for infrastructure projects. So a, pro a program may come down the pike again, something like the bipartisan infrastructure law for which there were funds available for these types of projects. Right now you have a project that has a feasibility study and some conceptual layouts. So I think in the development of the program, we're probably still in a stage that we would be defined as crawling. I don't know that we're ready quite to walk. We're certainly not ready to run. Uh, and when I say we, I'm, I'm including all of the stakeholders. Keep in mind, I, I work for the airport authority, so um, that's my number one client. But I understand that as a stakeholder group, we always intended to engage stakeholders and, and help to answer questions like this. So I will provide this list of possible sources to Mr. Van Zandt and the airport leadership so it can be distributed for future consideration. And certainly a plan like this helps us go after those kinds of sources of funds. Yeah. If we show a funding source, we have a plan here. This is how much it's going to cost. We have a much greater chance of winning yeah. money than if we have no plan at all. So this is a really great start yeah. here. Can I say too that m almost all grant funding programs, th th the purpose is a need. There's a need. The, the grant funding is to meet the need, solve the problem. Um, I, I don't live in this community. I live in another small town in our state. Uh, but all rural communities are making efforts to retire septic systems whenever they can, particularly when they are at or near um, protected waters or you know special waters of the state. So I live in Suwannee County. Uh, Suwannee County loves to retire septic systems and put people on piped systems where it can be sent to wastewater treatment plants. Um, so there's funds available for that type of activity. The other need that's clear at the airport is development needs. So job growth grants are sometimes used for this type of project. My guess would be, if I could go back to the metaphor of uh, crawl, walk, run, we're, you're probably going to bite this project off in pieces. Um, and maybe the first piece is just getting water and sewer to the edge of the airport. So we haven't really, uh, we weren't tasked with and we haven't spent any time um, phasing the project. It, it's not, it's possible, but not likely you would get $23 million in one shot to do the whole thing. Um, but, but that's where we stand. Um, the longer it takes, co cost of everything continues to go up, particularly in the construction industry. So this same project five years from now save a complete collapse of our economy is probably going to be worth 20 percent more at least so um but once once the document is out and finalized i think the stakeholder groups can can maintain a dialogue with each other 
and look for opportunities to partner together in grant applications and partner together in ways that would define, well, what's the highest need and what's phase one or phase two or phase three of a project. So I have three other items, sorry to. I'm, I got the all time. The first one is on page five, at the bottom of page five. Yes, sir. And this has to do with the sanitary sewer system. And your analysis is that significant development beyond what is anticipated could exceed the capacity of the existing six inch force main. Right. So that is not part of the plan to build out right now. And um, it's not because of the airport project. It's because of the other stuff that might connect in. Yes. Okay. And so that, in my mind, must be addressed. And how would we do it? And how much more money would it cost? All that kind of stuff. Um, but it kind of leads to the other two problems. And the other two problems have to do with the difference between Clay County and Keystone Heights and Bradford County which is also basically the cutting line between the St. John's River Water Management District and the Swanee River Water Management District. Highway 100 going up to Stark is basically the line. And if you're on, if you're on the west side, you're in Swanee River Ran Management District, and you're on the east side, you're in St. John's River Water Management District. And so we need to address those two. And I, and I would say the biggest problem right now is optics. It looks like we are extending these lines and the biggest benefactors are Bradford County people. The most residencies, the most water usage, the developments included are Bradford County developments. And it looks like Clay County is building something to support Bradford County. And so therefore, I would say we truly need to team up with Bradford County and see what they can also do to help us if we all want to benefit from this. Do you have any comments on that? Well, it, who's running the slides? If you go back a few to the one more. So I, there's a near equal distribution of development in Clay County and Bradford County. For those that can't see, there's a vertical line that goes down the center of the graphic. That's the county line. And you can see the airport is somewhat bisected by the county line. So I, I, I will acknowledge that uh, there is a portion of the de proposed development in Bradford County, but there's some in Clay County. Um, Are you talking about I, numbers? It's way off balance. I understand that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not here to debate that. Remember, <laughs> no, I, and I'm just I developed a report team. to say what the airport needed. Right, right. No, I'm just and, saying and we can need I, to think about can, this. can I point out, too, I, I don't know if this was embedded in your question, but keep in mind the Clay County Utility Authority is not a part of Clay County government. It's a public body corporate that operates autonomously with its own budget and funding sources. Yeah. And I believe they, I don't know the name for what this is, but I think you'll get the metaphor that they exist to operate on a net zero. They, for, I'm so sorry, this oh. is a laser pointer. And oh, wow, on the slide that's fantastic. Well. <laughs> okay, but like most laser pointers, it doesn't like a TV, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> That's an invention for, for one of you inventors out there, a laser pointer that will actually point at a TV. But So um, I, I do think partnership is important, but Clay County Utility Authority has expressed an interest that if we could demonstrate a need, that they would extend and either take ownership or, or at some level receive ownership and operate the system. So to the extent that it might benefit Bradford County residents, I think they already do that to some extent on their system, and they're not bound to only exist and operate within Clay County. So I totally I, agree with everything okay. you said. The problem is optics here. We are yep. doing nothing to help our own citizens. I mean, I, my brother-in-law just spent $18,300 because he was forced to connect to the city water and city sewer. Nobody helped him. He had to pay that out of his own pocket. We're doing nothing to help our own citizens, and yet we're talking about spending $20 million plus, mostly to the benefit of Bradford County. I think the optics on that are bad. That's just my observation. I, I don't think that's a question for me, or at least I don't no, have an answer, but you're thank you. the engineering okay. it, and you did awesome on the engineering. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. All right, did you have three total questions? 
I'm done with my questions. Okay. Thank you. Well, that was questions. easier than I thought. No? I do. So, I do. Mayor, yeah, go ahead, because I, I have one. two questions. Okay. Hopefully mine are simple. <laughs> um, you're packing sh where the sewer is going to be. Are they? Do you know if they're planning on using the one behind the electric, or would they have to make a new packing yeah. place up or treatment center? So what they have told us is the facility they have now which again is I, I don't recall the name of the road hallman road maybe but it is expandable it's it's okay. the type of wastewater treatment plant that you you, you basically build extra units right. mm -hmm. the flocculator and then the distribution it is expandable and they've they've known for some time that it would need to be expanded i'm not privy to their timetable or the amount that they will expand it i think that's probably a question that could be asked directly of ccua uh, again, we t distributed this final draft about a month ago. Um, I pinged the CCUA staff and everybody else today to say, hey, can we have some comments? I'd like to have a final stakeholder meeting. So there might be an opportunity at that meeting for Charlie to ask, um, you know, what, what, is, what are your plans within the existing facility? Um, and, and Mr. Brown, if I could, someone else, an astute member of the audience asked me before the meeting, um, why, why aren't we just <coughs> building a new well field and a wastewater treatment plant at the airport? That's actually a great question. We started there when CCUA first showed up. They wanted the airport to give them some land so they could develop a well field and a wastewater treatment plant. The only problem is, you know, because it's a federally obligated airport, they don't have the ability to give land to anybody. Mm -hmm. The Clay County Utility Authority could buy the land which they were not interested in doing, or they could lease it at fair market value, which they also were not interested in doing. Those were, at the time, several years ago, those were both, uh, you know, game stoppers for them. So we have investigated a plan of, okay, if those are insurmountable hurdles, what's another way to crack the nut by extending their system towards and onto the airport? Right. My second so, question is yes, the, the Bradford County Road. Yes. Um, I didn't understand what you were saying about that adding on to it. Is that the hold up still the turn lane? Or no. can we be able to connect that to 100 the way it is? Yeah, the turn lane is still planned and there's still funding being sought for the turn lanes. But uh, Bradford County has been given permission by the DOT right away department, I guess. I, I don't work for Bradford County either, right. so I don't know those details. but. They've been given permission to connect the road. Uh, Bradford County forces will complete that work, but it can't, because we have to maintain a perimeter mm -hmm. of the airport, that work can't be done until some new fencing is constructed. And tomorrow night, the airport board will be <coughs> presumably receiving a grant from the FDOT aviation office to do the fencing project. Okay. So Good. the ball is rolling, if you will, to connect that road. I think it's still up to airport management and the board to decide how and when the gate will be open or closed, but there will be uh, a perimeter gate on the new road once it's connected to State Road 100. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So my two yes, questions, uh, with this proposal, which looks like it took a lot of work, is there a cost associated with that proposal? This proposal? That the work we did, mm -hmm. $135,000. Okay, and who paid for that? The city council, the city paid 110,000 in a previous budget year, okay. and uh, the, just the way, if I get, I, I keep using, I, I know who they are, but the former city manager and the former airport manager agreed through some means that as we submitted invoices, the city would pay the first 110,000, mm -hmm. and we're done with that. We're at the latter parts of the study. The airport is now paying the invoices. What's the expiration on this proposal? The date. The expiration on the task or on, on the, the proposal? On the proposal. So you presented all this detailed data, yeah. like Dan stated. So is there an expiration date on that document? Well, so if we let go to look at, you know, seeking a grant or whatever, yeah. we want to know that that document's still valid. Yeah. So I would say this has a three to five year life. Okay. And and most studies of this type um, have that lifespan. But there's there's two things that would change the validity of the numbers in here. If on airport development changed significantly, if the development plan changed, mm -hmm. we would have to reevaluate this. Or if 
other development along the corridor changed up or down, you'd have to reevaluate. And, okay. and I should say up or down for the airport. Okay. Probably giving you more than you need. This will be in one of Charlie's reports in the future. But <laughs> the, I do know the airport um, is planning to do an airport master plan update next year. Mm -hmm. That's usually a two to three year process. So the airport will be taking mm -hmm. its own clean look at the airport master plan that was developed almost 10 years ago and updating it. If any significant updates came out of that, you could look back at this report, update the report, issue a revised report. I would say the frame of this report is probably good for 15 years. Okay. Just the tweaking of the numbers and when the demand comes on board is what would make a difference. Okay. I, in fact, I'll give you one example. This, and I don't know if this was exactly what you were headed for, but let's see if the pointer will help me here. Uh, well, you see the large green buildings on the left in the mm -hmm. west side area. Um, I can't read that far, so let me look at let me look at mine. You see some gray parcels that are shown. Yeah. The MHD Rockland facility, you could think of that as the anchor facility. Mm -hmm. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six other parcels in gray. Mm -hmm. It's it's not reasonable for a first stage plan like this to think that the entire area would be developed. So we chose about 40% of the available land would be developed. There's a lot of uncertainty when an anchor tenant moves into any industrial park, they naturally will tend to attract other businesses that are either similar or have like uh, industry or maybe they are providers to the anchor tenant. Mm -hmm. So out towards State Road 100, we show a two acre, a three acre, an eight acre and a two acre parcel, which would be businesses that might want to front or be near the State Road 100. The other parcels are 15 acres and 17 acres located adjacent to the proposed Rockland facility. Mm -hmm. If in the master plan we determine that somebody comes forward and has a greater need for more or less property in that area, we would be able to adjust the forecast for how quickly that area would develop and then adjust the numbers in the report accordingly. I would venture to say though, again, I'm not a utility calculator, you could double the development in the west side service area in the next 10 years and the development along the rest of the corridor would still dwarf the airport's demand for water and sewer. And we've already said the airport's going to take care of its own fire protection water with its own dedicated systems where the water never leaves the airport. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate Was that it. both questions? Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, wow. Do I have any questions? Nope. Good. Thanks, Mr. Prang. Okay. Thank you for yep. your Next steps for us is getting final comments on the report. We will offer and hold a stakeholder meeting with as many entities as want to participate, and we'll finalize the report and make it available as PDF. Um, I give Mr. Van Zandt a printed copy if anybody prefers to read printed and you haven't read it yet. If you don't like all 78 pages, I will say there's a four-page executive summary at the front, which gives you all you need, unless you're just way down into numbers. <laughs> if, if it's okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> you said it, not me. You're right, you're right. I think you actually enjoyed reading it. Um, parts of it I did. Yeah. So um, the one thing I would ask is, if possible, involve Redford County. Yep. I'd like to hear what they have to say. Okay. Mr. Cornegay is in our stakeholders group, so okay. we will. Um, I'll make an effort with the airport manager to reach out specifically to them. Hey, and, and see what they have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, next on our action items, uh, we have two seats that are open uh, with the airport authority. Seat number one that expires in May of 2025 and seat number three that expires in May of 2027. I will entertain a motion to fill seat one of the Keystone Heights Airport Authority. Well, and we have, we, now I haven't done it when we've had more than one person, so we have three per slot, correct? I think somebody would just make a motion to put in seat one 
one of those three people. So, so could I make a motion that if any of the candidates are here, yes. that we let them speak up to three minutes? That's what we normally yeah, used to do. Yeah. Okay, is that okay with the candidates? Yes. Like, yep. like All right. If any that. of the candidates are here? Yeah, three of them. Okay. Okay. Ms. Terry Hall's the one who her hand up. All right. Let's start there. Would you like to okay. say something? Come on up. Yeah, come on up, Ms. Hall. <clears throat> Good evening. We're Good excited evening. that we have so many candidates <laughs> wanting to take a role here. <laughs> so I apologize for not uh, knowing this whole process exactly. So introduce us to yourself, please. My name is Terry Hall. I am a resident of Bradford County. I live about, as a crow flies, about 1.3 miles from the entrance to the airport. So I'm local. And um, long time ago, long time ago, I earned a bachelor's degree in forest management and a master's degree in forest economics. And I use that degree in my current job. I work for a timber company um, that, is, that is local here, but it's also international. Um, right now, I, I actively manage 57,000 acres in Bradford County. I also supervise the management of around 400,000 acres in the uh, state of Florida. This involves everything from timber harvesting, site preparation, replanting, to forest protection from disease, pests, and wildfire. In 2007, some of y'all might remember the wildfire that broke out. It was called the Dairy Road Fire. And it affected the land that I was managing, as well as the land um, that was adjacent, which was at the um, airport. Um, that fire burned about 15,000 acres. It jumped 100, it jumped County Road 18, it ended up in the Santa Fe Swamp right behind my house. Um, so it threatened structures at that time, and there was a lot of cooperation, a lot of camp landing, all the different companies, the agencies that came out and fought that. And so I was also a big part of managing that, that um, firefighting effort. Um, another important part of my role um, that I currently have is that I interact with agencies, um, including the water management districts, both St. John and Swanee, the Florida Forest Service, county commissioners, um, with Bradford and now you and um, other officials. Also, I work with like the University of Florida. We do studies, research um, things with them and I also have a lot of um, interaction with private landowners. Um, I believe it's important in my job and also in this position that um, cultivate good working relationships with the various people who are involved, people who live close by. Um, so the several things about this uh, position interest me. Um, one is having the opportunity to act in the best interests of the local community. Um, I've been a resident of Bradford County for almost 30 years. As I said, I live really close to the airport. Um, and also, uh, this was fascinating to watch the plans, the future possible plans for the airport. Um, I think this this seat would give me an opportunity, you know, to, to have some insight into what's happening, to help guide it in the decision making that's going on. And also I'm interested in um, the resource that the forest resources that are out there. I mean, the, the airport has a couple hundred acres of uh, timberland that's out there. And, um, you know, I, I would be interested in, you know, helping in some way to protect that and to, uh, you know, cultivate and make the best use of those resources. So I appreciate y'all's consideration. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And let's see, so we for seat that was for seat one that you're applying for, Miss Hall. Mm -hmm. Is uh, James Mr. David is here, James Eifert. Mr. Eifert here tonight? Yeah. Oh, yeah, come I, on up. I thought we had another one uh, here as well. But well, we have also Mr. Hall. David Welch as well. That's me. You're Mr. Welch, okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. My first name is John. I go by my middle name David because <laughs> okay. that's what my parents started calling me. And if, yeah. if I wanted to eat, I had to respond. Uh, my name is David Welch. I'm a resident here in Keystone Heights, retired about three years ago and moved here with my wife uh, because we have three granddaughters here and only one in Huntsville, Alabama. So it was, it was an easy decision. Uh, I'm a private pilot and, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, a, a tenant on the airport. Um, I'm you interested in aviation. You sir. rent a tea hangar? Yes, I do. Okay. Yep. Uh, I house my... Uh, experimental aircraft that I built huh? uh, in there. It's an RV-12 if you're interested. Uh, I'm interested in aviation uh, education, active in the Civil Air Patrol. And I'm going to finishing classes to be uh, certified as an aviation ground instructor. 
And uh, in the month of May, I'm going up to uh, a class near Kansas City to um, get training to be a uh, light sport aviation mechanic. So that's <clears throat> that's kind of my second career after having retired uh, from the uh, Army Aviation. Um, I, I was disappointed Mr. Wayne had to leave because I wanted to put him at ease by saying I'd grow my hair longer if I could. <laughs> and uh, I think there's a couple of us in here that would, would do likewise. <laughs> um, let's see. My, uh, my career, I'm a Michigan farm kid originally. <clears throat> and so my dad and my brother and I farmed about 800 acres. And we had to uh, fix. <laughs> we spent a lot of time fixing things and improving John Deere equipment and, <clears throat> and other, and in some cases, inventing our own equipment. And that sparked a, a lifelong interest in fixing and improving things. And so that's been my, been my career in engineering, is uh, process improvement, product improvement, product support. Um, took a wrong turn into program management for a while and uh, made it back to engineering about the last, yeah, he nods his head. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, about the last 10 years, I spent working for a consultancy at the Army, Avi uh, Army Aviation and Missile Command, uh, working on some of the systems that Charlie probably used, and uh, also spent some time working on a system that uh, was in the uh, Guided Missile Destroyer Arleigh Burke class, and I see a a Carney hat in here, the DDG-54, that was one of my ships. <laughs> yeah. So I'm making a lot of connections here, I like that. Um, let's see, I guess I'm at a loss to say much more if you have any questions or have I missed, Charlie, have I missed anything? No, uh, no okay. Well, uh, I'll just, and this sir. is for all the candidates. Yes. Um, we have a small airport. Yes. And there are times when we need all hands on deck. Yes. And so I'm, I'm hoping that all the candidates, when necessary, are willing to get out and give that man right back there, David Kirkland, a hand. Whether it be driving a lawnmower or picking up trash or whatever it is, there are times, you know, governor is coming in on Saturday. Yeah. And we need this place spick and span. And I'm, I'm hoping that our board members understand that it's not you're in this lofty board position and you got a bunch of worker bees below you yeah. to do all the work no yeah. not at our airport we're small no not, i wouldn't feel uh right about showing up once a month to a meeting and as it happens i like lawnmowers <laughs> well so. and, if you got a, <laughs> and if you have a plane there and yes. you're that's working nice. on your plane you're gonna be there so yeah. that's perfect that's awesome absolutely thank yep. you so uh, well, thank you for your time and thanks, Mr. Look forward to Appreciate it. Is Mr. Eichert here tonight? No. No. He is not. He he called and he emailed and asked me some questions about the process and I as I'm thinking back in my head, I don't know that I encouraged him to be here tonight. I told him that the city council, you guys on April first will be making the decision. <coughs> He's not here tonight, and I haven't heard from him. Just as a reminder from his application, he's General yes. Eifert. Right. Mm -hmm. I would like to nominate uh, Terry Hall for that well, we, we, seat. Oh, that's right. That's it. That's it. Yes, it is. I would like to nominate Terry Hall. Second. For seat one. Discussion. Did I hear a second? Yeah, did, I hear a, did I hear a second? You said yes. second? Any discussion? So I'd, I'd like to say that the, this is the airport, mm -hmm. and we need an airport person. Um, we need to deal with the FAA, someone who understands Class D airspace, Class E airspace, someone who understands FAA certifications, um, someone who understands the difference between jet fuel and um, L10-1010 fuel. Um, we need airport people on the airport board first. And then if we have a luxury, we can add a forest person or someone else. Um, but that's my preference, having spent a career in the Air Force and also being on the board, the airport board, at one point in my career here in Keystone Heights. I'd like to give it a little different spin on that, if I might. Um, so much of what we do and what they do at the airport is based on relationships that are built over a period of time. 
And looking at General Eifert's um, resume, uh, it appears, based on his 41 years in the military and his his uh, relationships that he has, uh, in his own words, a good relationship with both state and federal elected officials, which could be abused to the KHAA. I think that's extremely important, uh, especially now that there's going to be growth. We're going to need permission to do certain things by various agencies. I think someone with, who's plugged into relationships right now is the person we need. Yes, I agree with you. An experienced forester would be great. But right now, I think, I think that, the, that the general's resume and his experience and his, his dealing with officials and his commanding 13,000 people, he knows how to, how to get things done, um, he would be my preference. Let, let me add some support to that, too. General Eifert can call the governor when he wants to. Mm -hmm. General Eifert has gotten millions of dollars in grants. <clears throat> um, he knows so many people statewide. Mm -hmm. um, he <clears throat> is a, a, a huge resource that yeah. could help our airports so And that's much. what I'm getting at. That's, that's my point. Yeah. So... Um, Oh, what well, I guess what I'm saying is uh, we have three really good candidates we here. Do. We really do. And this is not going to be easy. I think that there is one um, thing that we haven't talked about, and that is if the measure passes to change the city charter, we will lose the voting member on Camp Landing as requested by Camp Landing, and we will add another new voting member that will come from the civilian populace. So I expect that we may be going through this process again and in one month, maybe two, mm -hmm. and adding another new member to our board. So I would, I would encourage all of you who are um, applying for this position, if you're not selected, please apply again. You're an outstanding candidate, and I think there will be another opening besides these two, and I, there's another chance for you to get on that board. And, I think all three of them are great. And, and just as I mentioned, seat one expires next year. So it's a year long for that position because Charlie had to step down to become our city manager. So. Can I? Say yes, sir. Thank you. I second it because Vice Mayor beat me to the first one. But I've known Mrs. Hall for several years. I was at that fire in 2007. I got to see her in action. She um, um, is very good at what she does. Um, several years ago, we lost our forester, Mr. Harris. And um, fortunately, we've had two other people that have stepped in to do it. Um, but ever since I've been on this council, trees was important. It might have been because Mr. Harris was so in love with what he did out there with with the trees and everything. And um, and I think he probably knew every every tree that was out there. And um, I think, I feel, and the reason I seconded it was, I feel we do need a forester. We need someone out there that knows how to take care of these trees, when to, when to cut them, when to plant them, and when to burn the underbrush to keep them from being destroyed. Um, if unfortunately we have a big fire again. Um, that fire was to the point where we were ready one morning to evacuate the high school because it was so bad. And um, so, but I, like I said, I did see Mrs. Hall in action and how she worked with the forestry department, the fire departments and whoever else was there. Um, and it is a big responsibility to take care of all these trees. So that's, I call them both. Unless you have something to say, I'm sorry, Mayor. <laughs> I do have one more thing if everyone else. Okay. So uh, a while back, I happened to be talking to our um, board of directors, Mr. Kirkland, and I asked him, you know, what kind of people do you want on the board? And his first reaction to me was, I need aviators. I need people who can speak airport ease um, and so that was important to me what does mr kirkland want on the board any 
any other comments? No. No. So we have divided. <laughs> Oh, we have a motion on the floor for my one. Password <laughs> so, what's the, how do we go about doing this? Send the vote. You got a motion, you got a second, call for the vote. Yeah, okay. So I make a motion. For that, that one particular yeah. person. Uh, it's already a motion. I nominated yeah. her. Okay, yeah. so I make a motion. No, Tony, Tony No, second. we've already got the motion and the second. Motion. Just call for the vote. Okay, so for Miss Hall? Yes. The vote. Aye. Aye. Nay. Nay. Aye. It's done. Motion passes. Motion okay. passes. Okay, now, sorry, it's a little complicated with three of these to do. No, oh, it's fine. Okay, for seat three, um, mm. I'm sorry, seat three, which expires in May of 2027, we have Mr. Robert Lud Ludwig, who's a current member, Mr. James Eifert, I'm sorry, General Eifert and Mr. David Welch. Um, so I know that Mr. Eifert is not here. Mr. Ludwig, would you like to say a few things? Hello, Council. Hello. Hi. Many of you know me already, but um, I'll go ahead and I'll repeat you know, some of the same information, so I apologize because I may come across as a broken record. But um, Bobby Ludwig, and I live at 6451 Lock Lomond Drive, and I'm here again because I the seat that I was appointed by this council a year ago was for the final year of a three-year term. The board member prior to me um, served the two years and then stepped down, so that's how I came to be. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to continue on and to move forward as a member of the board and be able to serve a three, a full three-year term. Um, to go back a little bit on my history, and again, I know a lot of you may know this, but I've worked for the city of Jacksonville as a firefighter for 26 years, and I've been employed throughout the entire 26 years as an airport firefighter. When I came in front of this board a year ago, I my experience was the love of aviation and the fact that I had worked on air, different airports throughout the city of Jacksonville. The one part where I didn't have experience was the administrative side of things. In this past year, I've been able to gain a lot of experience with the administrative side of things, and I find that I do enjoy that. I, um, I find that in, in the later stages of my life, this is more my speed, the speed of an email versus sitting on go, waiting for the big one to happen. <laughs> so I'm, uh, this is more my pace at this point. The three airports that I'd had experience with uh, throughout my career were Craig Airport, which is also known as Jacksonville Executive, which is on the south side of Jacksonville, and it's a small general aviation airport. This has somewhat similarities to Keystone Airport. Jacksonville International Airport, which is the main commercial airport that any of us as we're traveling that's who where we're going to be flying in and out of and then also currently right now where my station is is at Cecil Airport which is more of an industrial airport where we house uh, companies that, that build trainers uh, that do aircraft maintenance we also house Homeland Security the Coast Guard as well as the Army um, Army National Guard and all of, all of the, the the previous airports, as well as being able to spend a year with the Keystone Heights Airport, it's given me an opportunity to bring in some of my experience that I've had working at, at the other airports. Each per airport has its own personality and own traits. Some are very similar, then there are some that are different. And I feel like over this past year, I've been able to provide information for things that were that came easy for me because I was used to utilizing it through some of our different airport systems up in Jacksonville. So I believe that that's helped me throughout the year to provide guidance, you know, um, and solutions to some of our problems. It's an ongoing process. A lot of it uh, still is because one year is simply not enough to be able to get everything done that you want to do. Um, when I started a year ago, what I had, the, the, the image of what I had that I was stepping into ended up being very different from what reality is. And throughout the, the past year, most of you on, on council, you know, were right there alongside with us that we, we had a lot of challenges that were in front of us. And we all, we all worked together on a lot of, a lot of those challenges. And um, 
you know, I think along the way that we've all learned something together, I believe, because there's a lot of new members. We have a couple new board members, including myself was one, um, as well as replacing airport staff. And then for um, Ms. Mayor, you were elected mayor, I guess, prior to right around the time that I started a year ago. Um, and then Ms. Vice Mayor, you know, moving into a new role. So I think this process has been a little bumpy up throughout the time or a little turbulent, if you want to use some airport terms. But, um, but I think it's been a growing, I think it's been a growing phase for us. And I believe it's been a learning phase. And I don't think it was all for naught. Um, I really appreciate the, the opportunities that we all had and that we're getting to know each other and I think that's extremely important to have that working relationship with um, with you guys because you are our bosses you know um, and we there are certain needs that are that the airport has as well as certain needs that you have, guys have and then it's I think it all works together um, some of the um, various items that my time on the board um, that has afforded me to be able to do and participate in. I'll kind of just list them quickly, but I've been able to participate in, um, in putting together some of our security plan for the airport, which is that is uh, an item that we have to submit to the Florida Department of Transportation. And obvious, for obvious reasons, there's security information that's important to all airports. Um, that is like the number one paramount. So that's, a, that's I, was, I was pleased to be able to get to participate in some of that activity. Um, currently still ongoing working with our new airport manager, um, the emergency response plan. And that essentially consists of two parts. There's an internal that the airport put together um, so airport personnel know how to operate during the event of emergency and then eventually be able to an outside emergency response plan to be able to, to educate and do familiarization for the, the responding um, first responders and law enforcement agencies. Um, I've also been able to, throughout this time, build a relationship with the first responders and law enforcement contacts. Uh, I think that's extremely important, and it's, it, it's a little bit of work involved with that. It's not as easy as it sounds, but trying to reach out and get to the right contacts. And I believe we've just now you know, been able to, to finally get that secured into place and been able to actually, actually issue emails for different events that we were having where they were either needed or not needed or at least need to be in somewhat of a standby mode in case we had an event. So, and I believe it's from coming from a first responder himself, it's, it's always nice to have a heads up of knowing what you're going into as much information as you can if there ever is an issue. Um, also within this year, getting to know the airport staff. Um, we have a lot of good people that work there and, and like Councilman Lewandowski stated, I mean, it's not a lot. There's not a lot there, but they do a lot with a little. And, and some of them are very good at multitasking. Um, and it's, it is very much appreciated. And I felt that it was important throughout this year that I at least tried to take time to get to know each of, of our staff and understand what they do and just kind of get to know them and, and find out and learn a little bit about their personal life. I've also had an opportunity to, um, to meet some of the tenants, not all of the tenants, but I think, again, it's important that we have that time to where they, they can get to know me and I can get to know them and again building that relationship and that friendship because there is a very tight family unit out there a very tight group and um, and some of the people that have been there have been there for a very long time so um, coming in as an outsider sometimes there's a little hesitancy there but um, I understand that you know and, and over time as we get to know each other I believe it's, it's very important I think one of the for myself is one of the most beneficial things I've been able to do throughout this year, um, and again, some of you council members have been aware of this and, and have been a part of this as well, is I believe I've been able to provide some healthy debate within our board meetings. Um, I'm a very inquisitive person by nature, and I want to understand things. I want to make sure that I'm getting the knowledge that, or gaining the knowledge and getting all the information to be able to make the best informed decisions that we can on the information that we have. Um, or, or the, the item that's in front of us. And I know you all as city council understand as well, this is an ongoing process. There is so much information to gain for every single item. It's a, it's a never, you're never not learning something. Um, and, and I know you all are faced with a lot more than us in some situations where you're looking at something that's completely foreign to you and you're trying to take in and absorb all that information and make it all make sense prior to having a meeting where you sit down and discuss it. So um, that is something that 
because of the sunshine law and how we are not in, in just like for you all you're not able to interact with each other outside of your meetings that is the one opportunity that we have to be able to do that and and I know you all know that so sometimes I've been able to I brought up questions that were things that I just believe needed more clarity and um, again I believe it, it, it brings healthy debate it it may cause uneasy times sometimes, but I believe it's healthy for us to be able to have that interaction and be able to speak because we can't do it outside, outside of that meeting. And you know, until we've had people in place for a little bit longer, because we have had turnover with the manage on the management side there at the airport. Um, until we've had people in place longer, they're not going to have all the answers either to where you can just go talk to them. So I believe as board members, we've I've had that opportunity as a board member throughout this year to be able to, to do that in these meetings. Um, before I conclude, I would just like to say this. Um, I would like to encourage the council, whether I'm reappointed or not, I would just like to encourage the council to stay involved as much as possible. I know you all have a lot on your plate as well, and you're trying to fit a million things in, and you only have so many hours in the day, but I just encourage that you do stay involved with the airport. That is a very important piece of infrastructure um, out there with having that airport within this county. And a year ago when I was appointed, that was one of the things I had mentioned at that time. I realized how important it was. A lot of small areas in, in rural counties or just any county would love to have an airport in their county. Um, and, and that's something that, again, I, I, I believe that, that you as stakeholders need to, you know, stay informed and stay aware and, and be a part of what's going on at the airport. Um, for many years before my time on the board, there has been progression in, in building a new entrance way to, into that airport, the western entrance that Mr. Prang was showing you tonight on his slide. The final piece of that, as, as well as what Mr. Prang was mentioning, is, is almost into place and that will be connecting it to State Road 100. When that happens, that is going to open up and you could see all for yourselves the western side of the airfield for future potential plan development on that side of that air, airport um, and that is in the Bradford County side but even though it's the Bradford County side again you as stakeholders I believe need to have you have a vested interest in that airport and you need to stay involved and, and you know no matter what happens on any side of the airport that you know that you guys are a part of that process um, I think that's all I have here um, with that, I'll conclude, and if you have any questions or comments or complaints, I'll be glad to take that, too. So, Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you. So I will entertain a motion to fill seat three. Right. I will nominate Bobby Ludwig. I'll second that. Any, any comments? Any discussion? I think he's done a fine job in the past year. Experience counts. Yes. Okay. Can I have a all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Yeah. We're good. Congratulations, Mr. Ludwig. Next, we have the uh, Keystone Heights Heritage Commission seat five and a renewal application for Ms. Collins, Carrie Collins. I make a motion. We go ahead and um, place Mrs. Collins back on this board. I right, second that. What, what did you say? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. I make a motion that we put Carrie Collins back on this board, to keep her on there. For a full term. For a full term. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Second that. Okay. All in favor? No. Aye. 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 Could I make one comment? Sure. I was uh, oh, looking for the discussion, <clears throat> but uh, Ms. Collins emailed this morning and asked that she, I pass on her regrets for not being able to attend and express to you that she has enjoyed her tenure on the Heritage Commission and would like to mm -hmm. she is. And she's doing a great job. Okay. Well, she's got it. <laughs> Okay. Okay, next is uh, 
the donating twenty-five thousand from the lakes fund for the fishing pier to save our lakes organization. Mr. Van Zandt. So I received a request directly from Save Our Lakes for twenty-five thousand dollars to move forward um, with uh, their conceptual design of a fishing pier that would be located at Keystone Beach here on Lake Geneva. So they're um, they've got a rough budget of about two hundred thousand, um, and they've been shaking the trees and have raised north of one hundred thousand at this point. I don't remember the exact figure uh, Vivian James told me. Um, so they're asking for you to donate 25000 out of your lakes fund, which has currently 41000 is designated for anything to do with lakes. Um, so you have the funding to uh, grant this request if you wish. And there are two gentlemen in the audience that could speak to it, that have, uh, one representing Save Our Lakes and one actually builds piers if there's any particular questions have kind of given you the general information that I know and understand. Well, I'd, like, I'd like to move that we mm -hmm. do as we have said that we would do is support lakes and, uh, and give $25,000 toward the construction of a fishing pier. I'll second that. I have a question. Discussion. And this goes to our, our attorney. This got brought up when we brought this up and I've talked to Vivian about it and where are we at with if we put $25,000 of this money in and they control the building of the, of the pier do we do they have to go out for bid or are we just kind of donating this to the save our lakes to do with what no, because you're, I mean, you're essentially using tax dollars. They still have to follow our procurement policy to do that. So you're not donating. You've already set aside money based upon a prior request to save our lakes. Right. So the money's in that account. You're really just authorizing them to use it for the part of the purchase and construction of the fishing mm -hmm. pier. But as part of that process, they're still using tax dollars to construct, design, mm -hmm. build. Um, so they have to, they have to go through, um, a bid request process for it. Yeah. And title to this, of course, would stay with the city. It's a permanent fixture. Right. Yes. Right. It's so basically, we are working with them, public-private relationship, to to do it. Mm -hmm. We're kicking in twenty-five thousand dollars. I think it's that's what we're doing. Well, I personally think it'd be a great asset. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are around the beach and you see how many people are going down there with their fishing poles with their kids and oh, yeah. stuff. And they're catching fish right there, and I, I think it would be a great opportunity to add to the beach with having this pier. I have a question for one of the gentlemen to about the pier. Yes, Scott Slater. Stay Hi, right. Scott. Go ahead. Um, when when the pier is built and the water comes up, yes, will it float? Yeah, so your um, tentative design, and again, um, we did this to establish a budget or what we thought it would, the project would cost. Tentative design is for 150 feet of fixed pier, which is stationary mounted to stationary piles. A gangway, which um, pivots from the stationary pier down to a floating structure that is 8 foot wide and 50 foot long. Um, and so that floating structure will go up and down with the water level. Okay. Does that answer your right. question? Yes, it did. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? We appreciate you being here tonight. Yes, thanks. Okay, so we have a second. Are we ready to take a vote? Yes. Yeah. Aye. 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 Mission carries. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Landowski, it looks like lake level flow predictions. Yes, can we bring up my slides, please? I'm not sure how great this is important, but I have to reach. Because the closer you are to the taller the PC, the better it will I see, okay. Well, we'll try this. Um, I'm a visual person. I also forget things. And so to help me, I created some slides. And then I thought about it, and I went, you know what? I'll bet there's a few other people out there like me who might like to see what I put together. So um, I started thinking about 
What's, what are we going to be like in five years from now, 10 years? How's it going to, how long is it going to take for our lakes to fill and, and that kind of thing? So this is my best guesstimate, talking to all kinds of different people. Um, I'm not an expert in water stuff, but I did talk to a lot of experts. And I also stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> okay, so my first slide here was, I went looking for some picture of the Atonia Chain of Lakes. And I couldn't find it anywhere, so I made my own. And so I took a bunch of uh, pictures from other places and mashed them together, and I added lines, and I added arrows, and I added numbers, and uh, explanations. And so the Atoni chain basically starts up on Camp Landing there at Blue Pond, and it comes down. A lot of people think it starts with Kingsley Lake. It doesn't. Kingsley Lake does not flow this way. Okay, it really starts at Blue Pond. And you can say it starts with the mining that's above that. That's where it actually kind of starts and water flows from there down. But, um, and then from there goes the Lowry Lake, Magnolia Lake, and this is the key here now, number four there. This is where the water comes in on the Black Creek Project. And this is where there's going to be six filtration ponds, but we only need three. And so by Fingers crossed, by Christmas, those three are going to be ready and water's going to be flowing into them. Um, the other three are not due to be completed until sometime in 2025, but you only need three. And so uh, the filtration process will start and it's going to take, well, I, I got timeline after this, but it's from there, it comes down to Lake Brooklyn, fills uh, Lake, Little Lake Keystone, and then from there it comes into Lake Geneva. Then it goes to Oldfield Pond and finally into Half Moon Lake. So that's the Etonia chain. And I have some caveats and some notes there. Um, okay, so the timeline. Um, water will start flowing between September and December. That's official in fall is. No, September 21st to December 21st. Um, that's fall and that's what they said it will, it will be flowing during the fall. I'm saying Christmas. Let it flow by Christmas and I'm happy. Um, the filtration fields are then tested. This is supposed to take two to three months, those three filtration fields. So finishing sometime between January and March of 2025. Water starts to flow in down to Alligator Creek then and into Lake Brooklyn. And the average is supposed to be 7.5 million gallons per day. Um, that's supposed to happen about the time the uh, filtration fields are being tested and done. Now then we have, uh, once it's filled, and we're at 109 feet right now in uh, Lake Brooklyn, and we need to be at 114, 115 feet before it'll flow into a little Lake Keystone. But six feet is not too much for Lake uh, Brooklyn. And so we expect, I'm looking at little Lake Keystone starting to receive water between September and December of 2025. So a, a year after it starts flowing from Black Creek, it starts flowing into Little Lake Keystone. A Little Lake Keystone is not going to take long to fill. A couple months, maybe three, it'll be full. And then the water starts to flow into Lake Geneva. So we're looking at latest March of 2026. We're talking at two years from now. Water is flowing into Lake Geneva. And uh, next slide. Oh, I could do that. What am I saying? I've got it. My, okay. What do we need to do? Okay. And so uh, this is Dan Lewandowski's best guess. All right. Um, well, first we got to complete the Blackwater Creek Project. Well, that's really the St. John's River Water Management District. They're responsible. But I give that a green. They're looking good. Uh, everything's go. Does the city need to do anything? No. Uh, we got to clean up Alligator Creek. There's a bunch of connections between those lakes, and those are not good right now. In fact, I know the city manager and a few other people went and started looking at Alligator Creek and what needs to be done. And um, he's starting to work on that. So that is something the city needs to help with. We're not the only ones. But we got to clean that up if this water's going to flow properly and we're not going to flood residents and we're not going to have all kinds of bad things happen. Um, 
We need to amend the Black Creek Project permit. And maybe uh, Doug down over there knows what I'm talking about. But when this was first created, it was created as a closed system. And the chief engineer explained it to me when I was on city council in 2016 or 2017. And he said, in order to get the initial permit approved, they had to close off Lake Brooklyn. And when Lake Brooklyn got to 114 feet, they had to turn off the pipe so that they did not taint any of the lakes down chain with a color change. And that's how they got the first permit. Okay, they, St. John's, Water, St. John's River Water Management District has made the choice to wait to ask for that permit to be amended. They did not want hiccups. They did not want problems that would stop the project. Now I am being told that they are in the process of amending the project so water can flow to Little Lake Keystone and down to Lake Geneva. The permit does not say that yet though. And so until they get that permit changed, water will be turned off as soon as Lake Brooklyn gets to 114 feet. Now, I put it as green though. I have confidence right now as of today that St. John's River Water Management District is doing the right thing and they're going through the process to amend that permit. But that has got to be done. Otherwise the rest of the lakes will, won't see a drop of water. The Geneva Project. This is really on Lake Geneva, and it's about the trees and safety hazards that have grown up over the decades. And if we start boating on Lake Geneva, the trees will eventually die and topple over, and there'll be stumps there. And, and we could literally have people dying in Lake Geneva because they're out there water skiing and they, they accidentally land on a tree stump. Um, so uh, I know that Solo, is work in the Lake Geneva project. And this is so much bigger than Keystone Heights. There's so many people involved. But we might need to be involved too. And certainly any help we can give Solo for this, it would, it would be great. Um, and lastly is the boat ramp access and readiness. Um, some of the ramps are in Clay County. There's a ramp uh, for Lake Brooklyn over in Park of the Palms. Um, some of these are closed, some of them are Old. Some of them need to be, I don't know, looked at for safety reasons and things like that. Dan, the King Street ramp is open. It, it was open last week. Yeah. King it Street ramp from yeah. Brooklyn is okay. open. Okay, that's wonderful. That's one in Park of the Palms, right? Yeah, uh, at, at King Street, outside of Park of the Palms. Okay, just outside of Park of the Palms. Okay, that's wonderful news. Because when I put this together two weeks ago, it wasn't open. So I'm very happy to hear that. Um, but I still think we need to look at our boat ramps. Um, it, it, I, I used to go fishing on Lake Santa Fe, and there was always a problem with parking. Uh, you know, the, the trailers, the boat trailers, and the vehicles pulling the boat trailers, and, and everybody's jockeying for position, and where you're going to park, and all that kind of stuff. You know, if, if Lake Geneva and Lake Brooklyn come back like we think they're going to come back, um, we're going to have everybody from Jacksonville to Gainesville coming out here with their boats. And it's going to be a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. And we need to be ready for it. Um, so, next, oh, I'm the one in charge of slides. Okay, so my concern <laughs> is that no single government organization is looking at the total picture. Each government agency is just focusing on its piece, whether it be the county or the water management district or the Florida Fish and Wildlife. No one, any government organization is looking at the big picture. The only people who are really looking at the big picture is Solo here, the Save Our Lakes organization. And God bless them. They're doing angel work. Um, but my recommendation is that the city of Keystone Heights help Solo however and whenever we can. And the reason is we are the people who care the most. And we are the businesses most impacted by the changes that are coming. And so... We need to help them and also on our own get ready. Because I'll, I'll bet you in five years, Keystone Heights is not going to look the same. And we, we don't have any real choice. It's coming. It's coming. That's all I had to do was just share that. Um, no, no action needed. Thanks.
Yes, ma'am. I just have one question on your, your timeline. Um, I think I think the district is saying early fiscal 24, is that correct? Which would be October, November, December. So I, I think your your graph is, is, is correct. Uh, but why the two to three months for the testing? How long does it take from the water to get from Black Creek down to the test fields? I just was told by someone who knew a whole lot more than I did, okay. and I just used their numbers. Okay, I would think it would go faster than that. It might. That's just it my gut, gut reaction. Okay. I think the testing is just how long the water has to sit in the retention pond to allow the sediment to drop so then it okay. comes off the top. It's not just the piping part. So basically the spigot will be turned off until the testing is completed. I, I don't know. We don't. I guess we can agree we don't know. I don't know. Can I, can I say something sure. about, okay. Um, myself and, um, and Bo and our county commissioner first met and Charlie was at the meeting we had here in the office and we went out. My concern was, yeah, we got to clean it up. My, my thing was the creek from Park of the Palms to Little Lake Keystone. Mm -hmm. um, because when you walk the trail and you can't see where the culverts are, um, that needs to be taken care of. Yeah. Um, we met again, was it last week or two weeks ago? Real two weeks day. ago. <laughs> um, and we had a representative from St. John's Water Management that was there and we went down into the creeks. Um, and Clay Electric, my understanding has always been it's the property owners. We cannot just go into a creek and start cleaning. Um, it has to be the property owners to do it, doing that. And we did talk to a couple of them that are adjacent to Park of the Palms and they're, they're, they're looking at taking care of their side. Um, I will say that there is water in the creek on the Brooklyn side. And uh, when Vivian and Bo and I went out with Betsy, it was back towards the lake. And when we were out two weeks ago, it's even further. So, and that's just from um, the water in Lake Brooklyn that, because of the rain. And we know that Geneva's mm -hmm. coming, has come up. But when we do get that pipeline going, and I, I, I think it's going to be sooner. When, be. when they, mm -hmm. it, yep. I mean, they're busting tail out there on, out there getting that thing done. So, um, I think we are going to be slammed with a lot of people from other places. Mm -hmm. I mean, the vice mayor was here when she was younger, and um, I was here, and yeah, the boat ramps are full with people trying to get in. Yeah. We had boat races and stuff out there at the beach Fish and stuff. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's gonna it's gonna be something that the younger generation has never experienced in Keystone, mm -hmm. and fortunately, being an old geezer, I I have experienced that, and it was fun. To, to meet people from other places coming down to use our lakes. Yeah. And King stuff. Street ramp is already busy. We took a, took a drive by it and there were like 10 or 12 trucks there with trailers. I mean, oh, it's, well. it's being used right now. Mm -hmm. In the first week. In the first week. In yeah. the first week. Yeah. Wait till the work gets out there. Together. And that, what you said there, Mr. Brown, that's the only one I have right. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem we got right now, is cleaning out Alligator Creek and making sure that water can flow. So, it's, based on what you're saying, Tony, then the residents are responsible because it's their land that butts up to that that's creek what, that's area. What, that's what I was so told. That maybe they way don't back. know they're supposed to do that. Well, there's a lot. I mean, to all of that, uh, the Florida DEP is going to have a say. That's why I was wondering. Permits, yeah. Yep. Fish and Wildlife have a part of it, and um, her name's slipping my mind. The lady, which from the St. John River Water Management District um, was gonna do some investigation and report back. And I haven't reviewed it yet, but I believe Doug gave a document to Bo Wright last week, is that correct? Uh, to further educate us. But uh, we, 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 the city of Keystone, don't really own any of them. Mm -hmm. But if, I, I, I look at, oversimplifying it here. I got to be, as your city manager, the Jiminy Cricket in the ear of all these other governmental organizations to keep it all moving. And I really do appreciate Scott being here. I've had extensive discussions with him. 
and Vivian James and mm -hmm. Solo has been uh, flight lead on this from the get go. Yeah. Yeah. And so really their their lakes policy is what I try to implement. You don't have a lakes mm -hmm. policy that I'm aware of in your charter or anything mm -hmm. else. So they are the organization that has we don't we board. can't the jurisdiction is really in the state if it's an navigable waterway the state owns yeah. the, the bed and I would assume that since this is one time this channel part of the Atonia chain was was flowing right through town that's probably been declared to be a navigable waterway and probably the state and there's a trust set up in Tallahassee just to manage this the state will probably have overview of the whole mess but and, and we'll be sort of going along with it, but it's it's something that's going to have to be addressed. And I would assume that that uh, that uh, the uh, water district is maybe working on that now. I don't know. I don't know. I would say thanks to Scott and uh, for being here. Yeah. You know, this is really a team effort. And um, if, if I don't know if the city's allowed or if we want to go down this path, but I would be willing to support some kind of financial assistance to residents who might need it to clean up the lake. Because, you know, if you've got a 85-year-old resident, you know, they're not going to go down there and cut stuff and remove stuff, and you know, you're going to have to hire somebody. So I'm just trying to think of ways we can help. We want to help the residents. Well, I want to help you, but we should talk about that offline. Okay. okay. I will say that from Highway 100, South, the majority of that creek is in Clay Electric's property. And we've already talked to them and they're aware. And when we walk look down in there, it's, it's honestly, it's not that bad. Good. It's not Good. that messed yeah. up down in there. There's a lot of growth and trees and stuff, but the base of your of the creek is still as sandy that it used to be. So. Okay. okay, moving along. <laughs> it's getting late. Uh, but we do have several other things here to go through tonight. Uh, these are just for discussion, um, these particular items that we're going to chat about here. Uh, first is agenda for Mr. Brown. Real quick, like, I was, I'm getting kind of confused about how our agenda is doing <laughs> because, and it's a good idea to get it where we're ahead of the game where everybody has an opportunity to see, but the past couple meetings we've had, something always comes up that we have to add something to the agenda. Is is that going to be a, a regular thing, or we we just we need as a, if we have anything to go on the agenda, if the ma manager's telling us and the city clerk's telling us, okay, here's the date to cut off, unless it's an emergency or something to put on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Do we need to just stay with what they're asking us to do so that that way we we don't, in the midstream, we're not adding stuff to it and stuff like that. That's the only thing I was asking. Yeah, so that that would be appreciated. The, the one thing that we did have to add so we didn't go another month mm -hmm. was the hip construction contract, which I would have bet you a dollar that we approved it last month, but we really didn't. I went back to watch the meeting and Councilman uh, Lewandowski had had some contractual uh, miscompares in there, so we went back and fixed all that and did a bunch of emailing back across this and forth. And our clerk who does the agenda because she's much more talented on everything internet than I am was in a class for six days, Monday through Saturday last week. So it, it didn't, it, it, it wasn't as smooth as I would like it to be, but when I get to the manager's comments, I'm gonna bring you a, a new agenda template that's gonna help us when we go to make a minor adjustment or add one thing, won't be as big a deal. But I would, I'm, the reason I kind of stomped my foot on having the agendas published a week early is just my assessment is we need to uh, always have the trust of the public, build the public trust, give people a week of business days to look at the agenda, look at the backup. So that is something we should maintain. Okay. Okay. And next. The 4th of July. Yep. Okay. Back when our um, previous manager um, left, um, 
she was real active in the 4th of July the past several years. I've been active in the 4th of July OCD, so I offered to, to be the liaison. Um, the staff has taken it and they have ran with it. Um, I did um, meet with uh, Mr. Wayne um, this afternoon down there to kind of give him an idea of where to come in and where to set up and all that kind of stuff. But um, this, I don't. I don't think I need to keep this on the agenda any longer. I think the staff has got it under control, and if there's anything, any questions, they can always call me. But I don't think we need to keep that on. Okay. Uh, next, any discussion about the? July I'm just going to ask if you have a development it's like, you know, they decided the exact time of the 5K run. Can we put that on the community calendar here that the city keeps? You know, as soon as we get any kind yep. of development like I'm that. I'm sure that she would be more than happy to provide that. That'd be wonderful. I know it's, it's very early. Okay. Anything else? Okay, next is um, schedule of the uh, Parks Master Plan workshop. Uh, I know we have a workshop coming up April 10th, potentially. Um, I guess I have to look at this like priority. I think we all agreed that to even entertain this parks plan, it's massive, that we need somebody who's good at writing grants and someone who can come chat with us and have a workshop when they can come and take a look at what's been presented and come up with suggestions. But I think we're wasting our time until we have a grant person come when you have a two to eight million dollar project that we're potentially looking at. How do you all feel about that? So I, I think we did talk at one point about a phased approach. True. And so we don't necessarily need to look at it as a two to eight million dollar project. It could be as small as the fishing care, $200,000. That's part of the parts plan. And that would make the phase one. And then we move on from there. <coughs> um, so uh, there's a hundred different ways we could do it. We could do it your way or we could do it phase Well, one. I don't disagree at all with what you're saying. I think that we could establish that at the workshop, what the phases might be, uh, and, and what that is dollars amount would be. Good. But also have this grant person either on a Zoom call or something to give us input and how we need to look at it. Uh, but I don't think it's something we need to talk about in the next couple of months. I think we have other things coming up that are a lot more important, in my opinion. Okay. Your Christmas project idea, I think, is very important, okay. the discussion on that. Um, so it's just my opinion. We could push that one off a little bit. We w we'll have a workshop, no doubt. But I think it's got to be something where I think we need to have one of those uh, folks involved in it to give us input. Um, so I'm, I've looked ahead on the agenda. Mm -hmm. i cheat a little bit. Um, the Christmas thing is set up for a workshop on August 14th. Correct. I think that's too late. I do too. Maybe I agree. we could do this Parks Master Plan workshop, just throw a dart at August 14th for that, mm -hmm. and then try to do the Christmas market workshop before that. I agree. What do y'all feel about that? So, uh, May? <coughs> we're going to have a workshop in May for the Christmas project? Since um, we're going to do the uh, the strategic plan is based on uh, April 10th because I think, uh, Charlie, you had someone you invited to come speak. Yes. Is that correct? So um, if we can ha wrap this discussion up, um, I've got some dates to go over with you. I was planning on doing it during item 9, the manager's update okay. uh, for workshops that uh, we've blocked off. Those can certainly be adjusted. But based on everything the the five of you have told me so far, I have laid out what I've heard the majority of you say in priorities. And again, you're the council and you tell me, no, this one's less priority, move them around. Okay. We, I'm going to facilitate the rest of this discussion okay. when we get down there. Okay. Okay, next uh, comes the performance reports. No, I've got city hall meeting. I think, I think well, we're on D. That's really one of the projects, though, isn't it? Charlie? City Hall meeting room. That's for I the. understood is your refresh. Right. Is that one of the things you're going to talk to? or? Um, I mean, we already kind of talked about it. 
Um, My commitment to you so far, based on what you guys said in your February 28th workshop, was we were going to freshen up the paint. I've got a lot of other things I would like to do with this room in terms of sound absorption. We've now had our public in 30 minute chairs for two hours. That needs <laughs> to be addressed. Um, this is not, you, you, to your point, this is not the best setup no. for a meeting room. And with some love, attention, and some funding beyond the paint, we can make it better. Um, but I'm, I'm planning to sequence that in, and again, I'll, I've got some priorities and some projected dates that I Okay, I see. that's why I was kind of skipping over. I thought yeah. you did. Yes. All right. So the reason my name's on that, too, is, Mayor, I wanted to support you on that. I wanted to mm -hmm. say, let's do it. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, and it's below the threshold of $2,500 or whatever it is that the council needs to approve. And so I just wanted to vote my support, uh, not even have to vote, but express my support and ask the city manager to move forward and, and do that. I think you have a great idea there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And my understanding is the mayor will go to Ace Hardware with somebody. <laughs> That's not my expertise. Actually, I already picked out the paint colors. <laughs> She's already got the Sorry, colors. Sorry, check. All right. All right. All right. Okay, so next is yeah. GA performance reports. Dan? All right, so um, uh, in, I've mentioned this before. I'll just, I don't want to drop it. I believe our city clerk and our city manager deserve to know what we expect of them. And that is the first part of the normal performance report cycle. You tell them what you want. And then maybe six months into it, you have a midpoint review. And you say, okay, you're doing great, but you need to work on these areas or whatever you're gonna say. And then at the end, you evaluate them based upon what you said you expected of them at the beginning, a normal performance review system. We do not have that in this city. And so I would just like to uh, get your thoughts um, how you want to do this um, I have I, as I mentioned before I worked with Marion Kelly who used to be the head of uh, human resources at Clay Electric and um, I put together a system seven years ago I still have not been able to find it we may have to start from scratch if I am unable to find what I did seven years ago but I wanted to just what does the council want to do with this I think that um, if you, we, we, they deserve to be done what you're talking about, and we've lacked that over the years. And I would suggest we maybe pull from another municipality on how they do their managers and their their clerks instead of trying to reinvent or anything. Or even go to the. Um, the Florida County Man City Manager City Clerk Organization? The ICMA. ICMA. Yeah. Yeah, right. but they got something we yeah. could get. No, they, they do. That's what your current evaluation is based on. Okay. Well, I don't even know. We just need to use it. <laughs> <laughs> just need to use it. Yeah. Okay. So, so maybe that's the action. Ask our city manager, can you go to the ICMA and request uh, their generic um, performance reporting system, performance evaluation system. It was on their website. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get that uh, together and distribute it to you in the next 30 days. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. I think, Dan, you've got the next couple of things. City discounts for taxpaying residents. Great. Last meeting I brought up the fact that I went to the new Clay County Outdoor Adventure park and um, I went there shooting with my son and because I'm a Clay County resident I got a big discount wow what a concept I'm a resident I get a discount there's not a single thing in this city that we give a discount to residents of this city not one but that would be left up to the business owners to do that would no it? no 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 this is a county entity and the county gives a discount. The okay. government right, gives right. a discount. I understand that. I think Councilman so, Brown's asking what city entity would offer yeah. Oh, I, the we first don't thing that comes to my mind is the pavilion rental. We should have a discount for city residents of, for pavilion rental. I just, I think that that's a great idea. And then when it comes to July 4th, we have to sell tickets because the fire department wants to count bodies so that we don't overload and we, and we have proper fire code enforcement, well, we could sell tickets to residents or give free tickets to residents and only charge non-residents. 
Those are the two things on the top of my mind that we take care of the people who actually pay the taxes in this town. And so I'm, I'm looking for city manager. Do you have any ideas there? I uh, gave some direction last week, uh, and I forget the, the amount I put on it, but to just uh, reduce the rate and uh, lowered the uh, deposit amount. It's $300 if, like, me who doesn't live in the city wants to, well, for everybody right now, a $300 deposit plus, like, uh, whatever the amount is for four hours. But I've already started walking in that direction, but I can develop a fee schedule and bring back to you guys for either information or approval. I, I don't know that you've got a, a fee schedule now to amend, um, so... I, I hear you loud and clear the the events, the people that pay the extra millage that live in the city limits should mm -hmm. get first crack at things and pay them far reduced rate mm -hmm. compared to somebody from Palatka coming over here and rent the beach. Right. I think we do have a fee schedule. Didn't we approve one a couple of years ago for the pavilion? I think mm -hmm. we did. Uh, and we I did think for the pavilion. Yeah. Yeah, and, there is and, a fee schedule. It was just done on a, on a I don't know don't even know if it was a resolution or yeah, that, acclamation. That, that is the one that, that we do have to be yeah. operating off of, but uh, based on y'all's discussion so far, I gave direction to lower the cost for a city resident, and I, I can't remember the number mm -hmm. off the top of my head. You know, you talk about getting in for July 4th. I think the bracelets were, what, Tony, $2 or $1? $1. $1. $1. $1. That $1. was for anybody, and it was just that we had kind of a token thing. So token. So and that, that, yeah. that went because of the cost of fireworks yeah and and we haven't had a, a budget committee meeting or anything and I was going to wait to bring it up but something we might want to look at also that was brought to me I thought it was a great idea is the money that we're making off the, the rental go back into the fireworks fund because this year if I'm not mistaken will be the last year we have the money from OCD to pay for the fireworks. Mm -hmm. Fireworks are only going to go higher. Mm -hmm. They're running fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars and probably next year with the water coming up, it's probably going to cost more because whoever's shooting fireworks is going to have to have a barge or something put out there in Geneva like we used to do it and and shoot off the barge. But that's something for us to talk about in budget and finance, mm -hmm. the possibility of doing that, and, and um, because I, I thought it was a pretty good idea. If it's just a percentage of the rental, you know, something that we could fund the fireworks. If not, I don't, I don't know where we're gonna get the money to do fireworks. You know, later on. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. But discounting, yes, mm -hmm. and going back years ago, and you might remember, Chris, that. That had a ticket booth house and if you were a city resident you got a little card and you could show them the card and you got into the beach free because they did charge I mean, back then it wasn't that much but still it was free for residents yeah yeah i don't disagree with looking at those options for folks and we just so, have to figure out what they are yeah if, if uh, for future meetings if you pursue this and let us know when you're done it doesn't need to be on the agenda again i just don't want it to be forgotten yes sir Okay, uh, Child of the Moon Tree, Dan? Um, as I said in a previous meeting, uh, we have this wonderful moon tree right here on the corner um, where uh, the library comes down and where City Hall comes up. Um, we're one of the few cities in the country that actually has a moon tree. But I like to think long term. What's going to happen 50 years from now? What's going to happen 100 years from now? That tree's going to be dead. Um, I want to say it's a sycamore. Sickle. Yeah. And, and so we need an arborist or somebody who's way smarter than me um, to tell us how we make a child of that moon tree. Correct. And, and, and we start planning it now so that in 25 years, when that tree <clears throat> dies, or I don't know, maybe it's going to last another 100 years, I don't know. But when it eventually dies, we already got another tree, and it's 10 foot tall. And, um, and so we have the child of the moon tree. And, uh, uh, and so I'd like to get that process started. Maybe the garden club could give some input on that. 
Sounds know, like a grafting project. Uh, maybe Miss Hall can help us out a little bit. Well, no. <laughs> so, no, not, not an urban forester. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, Miss Arnold's in the audience tonight oh. from the Heritage Commission, and she can elaborate on some things you guys have going on with regard to the moon tree that I've read in your minutes. Um, no? What are you talking about? The moon tree. <laughs> the, I think. The historic oak is what they were talking about. Oh, I'm talking about something different? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. thought it was the same thing. Just an aside, I still have in the computer where we dedicated the moon tree, uh, what, seven or eight years ago? You were up north. You were playing in Michigan or someplace, weren't you? I was on council. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're in there, so am I. That was it. Okay. And so, can you talk? Someone talk to the garden club? Who's going to do that? I think I can reach out to the garden club as well as all right, I'm sorry, adding to your plate here. I know you're already busy. <laughs> Mr. Zip Van Zandt, can you give us an update on the 125 Walker Drive purchase? I, I, I think as of tonight, um, you're, you're up to speed in the process. Um, Ron Blake, who is here, who's the real estate broker, is going to set up a closing where we'll sign all the documents, take possession. I've had a couple of discussions now uh, with the Transportation Planning Authority, uh, which is also kind of an offshoot of the FDOT, Florida Department of Transportation. And so the District 2 Region Manager, whose name slipped on my head, um, and the TPO uh, head and myself will be having a discussion about how this fits into their plan. It's already on the radar, so to speak. Um, I think it is in a plan. They're aware of the safety improvements that the council, I've heard you loud and clear, uh, you, you want to make a better right turn lane more safe. And so the next thing that I will be moving towards after we close on the property is putting out a request for proposal or bid process uh, to get a demolition company in there to take that building uh, down so that, that's kind of the next couple of steps here. Very exciting. <laughs> next, Mr. Dan is uh, Chautauqua. Right. Um, as you all know, here in Keystone Heights, we have a road called Chautauqua. And it always interested me, well, what does that mean? Where does that come from? And so many years ago, I looked into it. And we used to have these here in Keystone Heights. Chautauqua was the first half of the 1900s, and it was a way to share information, news. You know, there was no TV, there was no radio. Um, the only real thing was a newspaper. That was it. And um, and so these were traveling shows that would go around and sing songs and entertain people and give news. Many of them were religiously oriented, um, and they were a, a source of entertainment for communities. And the reason why that street here in the Keystone Heights area is called that is because that's where they used to happen. That's where the residents of Keystone Heights would go to see the local Chautauqua when it happened. And so I read with great interest in the Heritage Commission minutes that they were talking about the Chautauqua. And so I just wanted to um, share my thoughts and say, I think that's awesome. Um, I, I want to support you. Um, if, if you can make that happen, if we can help you make that happen, um, where the women's club is, they used to have, um, I, I don't know, called support buildings or something like that. And then the circle there that you drive around, that was where the actual Chautauqua was took place. It was like an in-ground arena type of thing. And of course, it's all overtaken with treaties and everything now. Um, so I, I don't know what there is to say or do. I, you know, I've never done one of these, but the idea just, wow, it just makes me feel awesome. Mm -hmm. about something Chautauqua was started out as a religious organization in the late 1800s. I think they were Methodists, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and for two years, we were ground zero for the Chautauqua movement, at least in Florida. And if you, if you look on some of the old photographs of the water tower, you will see a reference to Chautauqua City. So it was very, very important. And you're right, it was, it was educational, it was religious, uh, pre-television, of course. So there is a lot of history. Now, Chautauqua Circle is, I don't believe, within the city limits. 
that's out of the city. So, so there might be some limitations as to what we could do with that other than attaboys. But, uh, you know, I, I would agree with you. It should be encouraged. Yeah. And I'll bet if we went to the county, they'd be willing to work with us on it. Could be. Don't know unless we ask, right? <laughs> so um, I'm just, Heritage Commission, you got this. Whatever I can do to help. Uh, next, I want to bring up uh, that the uh, Keystone Heights Heritage Commission is going to be hosting the fourth grade field trip uh, they did last year, which was very popular um, with the students, the teachers, and the principal. And uh, we're going to partake in it this year as part of the rotation. And uh, just to kind of update councils, because they weren't involved in it last year, uh, basically it's going to be they're going to have a like a dry run of it because we're we've all agreed to be part of it this year uh april 16th is the, basically the practice and april 19th will be the actual event from 9 a.m till 12 p 12 p.m and basically we're going to have um, 100 children this year plus 15 to 20 adults with them so each rotation will include 25 children uh, the rotations will include the historic beach pavilion city hall the Moon, Tree, and Nature Park, and Fort 11. Basically what will happen is each rotation is about 30 minutes long. I've created us a role play, essentially, to, uh, to perform in front of them. Uh, their, the goal was for them to have an experience of what do we do here? What is this room all about? What happens in this room? So I want to start out with them introduce, uh, meeting us, who we are, what our roles are, um, show them what does a mayor do, what do the council members do, um, I think it was suggested by one of you, why don't we um, either do sign an ordinance or a proposal? Well, I decided why not? Let's do the proposal for purchasing the corner right here that we just talked about tonight. Because it's something they can totally relate to, because all of them know where it's at, right? So let them see us go through that role play acting, you know, uh, making the motion, voting on it, discussing it. And so go through that process. It'll take probably less than 30 minutes uh, by the time we get done with that. And then we're going to give them a, um, a proclamation for their accomplishment and coming through those four rotations to learn about how things work not only here but some of the other things that they've experienced that day with a key of the city tied to it. So that's kind of what we'll do for our part of it. Um, but they will have folks participating in the other three parts doing role play as well and educating them on what it's all about. So the date is April 19th from 9 until May. Question. Yes. Um, blue shirts. Sure. Blue, blue shirts. shirts. We need to look alike. I agree. Okay. Okay. So we all match. So any questions about that? Nope. Great. Next is the uh, special magistrate, um, Councilman Hart. Um, Charlie, I think you said something about a half-hour chairs and three-hour meetings or some, some such. So I'm going to keep this very short. But I, you have in front of you an email that I sent to. Uh, city manager uh, with copies to the clerk and also to Mr. Commando uh, on uh, February 29th, basically suggesting that we may want to beef up the role of the special magistrate to get involved in the uh, question of damage to city property. And I, I took a quick look at the ordinances and I think they could be augmented and made a little more specific. Uh, and the uh, special magistrate uh, sort of like a like a city city judge is what he is uh, has has by statute the power to levy fines and so on quite a bit of power as a matter of fact and I think I think you, in future discussions you may want to to, to flesh this out a little bit and, and of course you're going to get uh, uh, Rich's opinion on this but I, I think this this is a vehicle to keep a local levy fines and have instant justice. Uh, and, and justice that means something, uh, rather than relying on outside courts and agencies and so on. That's all I have. I, I put some supporting documentation there just, just for your, your uh, pleasure, pleasure, pleasurely reading. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Landowski, summer concerts? Yeah. Um, you go to all kinds of different places. They go to beach. Um, Jacksonville Beach, and they have uh, band shells, and they have summer concerts. When I was in Washington, D.C., we did Screen on the Green. Um, uh, we've got a wonderful venue, 
And we always do this on special events. We do a movie, at Christmas usually, we do a movie, at, uh, Halloween. Um, why not one weekend or one, once a month in the summer in June, July, and August, have down at our beach uh, some kind of concert event? And it could be our community band, it could be, well, we always talk about there's not enough stuff for the youth to do. Well, make it some youth band, youth oriented type of music, or a DJ, not even a band. And, um, and, and we make it a, a good thing um, where they can have fun. And um, there's cops around, so nothing gets her out of hand. And we get to enjoy our beach and, and uh, celebrate summer. Uh, just an idea. I'm just wondering what the council thinks. Community Band has four concerts scheduled already for this year. First one is actually this Saturday at one o'clock at the Pavilion. Okay, so and if you, a yeah, well, we and we've done this for a while, and, and thanks to the city, we have a place to rehearse as well. Uh, the the concerts could be moved outside to the stage, uh, depending on the weather, so that more people can can participate. Right now, we get we get between oh, 50 and seventy five people who actually come to these concerts, and they enjoy it. Can we advertise that on the community calendar, please? Okay, it must be recent because I have never seen it before on there. It's on there. Okay, good, good. And we're 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 getting the word out uh, using Facebook. It doesn't cost anything, and mm -hmm. we, we're probably reaching two, three thousand people. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, and I know I'm uh, getting ready to start the meetups with the mayors for Clay County, and I know they do this in Orange Park every month, and they have an incredible turnout with food trucks and. You know, trying to draw the young people in, and like I said, our median age mm -hmm. group's around 39 years old here. So I think it's about getting creative on things that get them to want to come downtown and yeah. have fun. You know? awesome. So I totally agree with that idea. In, in fact, I know a guy who owns two Kona ice trucks. So if you want, I can give you his uh, contact information. We can add him in the rotation. Okay. Next is committee reports and. God bless these people have been waiting forever. <laughs> uh, I didn't have them individually listed here. I know uh, we have the airport. Uh, David, do you have a report for this month? I, I gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I it a lot of oh, okay. So um, also the Heritage Commission? Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's getting, I'm sorry it's getting so late. Um, well, not a lot to report this month because most of our efforts going to the field trip. Um, but the big thing is our Facebook page, which we started last month revamping for the centennial. We started with the history of Keystone Heights from Fort 11. Moving on, we've covered the Chautauqua. A lot of information on there. We've got 2,000 followers so far, and we get more every day. Mm -hmm. So it's a great place. And, and also people are donating information, mm -hmm. and they're telling stories, which is what we want. We want as much input as possible, so it's been quite a success. Thank you for approving Terry's seat for the or uh, Carrie's seat for the next term. She's one of our most active people and, and quite the asset. And uh, that's it. I guess we'll just see you for the field trip run through. Okay. And Christine, I want to compliment you because I think you are the driver of keeping the Facebook page up to date and sending out all this information pictures and I know there's a lot of feedback because I I'm, see it. I'm I, the only contributor there. I, I although, see I, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. although that's it, it's a control issue. It's I'm using mostly yeah, my it's... personal database right. just a little bit with the city. I haven't even really gotten into the new stuff that might have been added in the last few years. And you've got that thumb drive that I gave you. It's right. like Boku pictures. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and, and I look at, at the pace that we're going, we haven't even gotten to people or residences. I'm looking to get it all in there by Christmas, you know, so that we have the entire history of Keystone Heights this year. Okay. Thank you. Any other committee reports? No? I'd, no? I'd just like to say we need to think about the Budget and Finance Committee. Okay. Um, we need to start as a committee, I believe it's still me and you, Mayor, um, we need to get with our manager and whoever he deems responsible for the records and stuff, <clears throat> but we need to start working on a budget for the next year. I mean, get a head start, <clears throat> excuse me, 
but I guess I've talked too much tonight. But um, I think we really need to look at sometime in May, start that. We normally start it in June, mm -hmm. but we, we really need to come together and start looking at, all right, we've got some expenditures, where are we getting the money, where are we going to have to move stuff. That needs to come through us, from the manager to the council. That's how we, unless y'all want to change it all around, I, I mean, it's up, it's up to y'all. But I think we need to get a head, a head start on our budget because we got a lot of ideas and good ideas and we got to figure out how we're going to pay for them. Especially when you're talking about events. Yeah. Right. Yeah, bands don't come still cheap. Best, so. Well, I mean, to yes. do like a farmer's market, to do the Christmas stuff, all, you need people to coordinate those things that are beyond the amount of time that your current staff has. Right. Is uh, May a good time, Charlie, for us to look at getting together? So, I've gone through with you and Mr. Brown because you are the budget and finance committee, and I called Mr. Lewandowski last week. Still need to go over with the vice mayor and Speedy coming on. Just where, where you are, kind of a uh, little education session on all your accounts. You're very healthy. Uh, we're working on the general accounting procedures and getting those squared away. Um, what is it, early April? We could have a open meeting at some point in May. I think that's that's doable. Um, so I, I, I will move towards that, and if for some reason I, I stumble or have to stutter step, I will um, come back and let you know. Okay. okay. Thank you. Just to clarify, you're talking about budget and finance committee. <coughs> yes, which requires those two. I agree. agree that it's publicly advertised. Everybody yeah. can come. Right. Yeah. Agree. Mm -hmm. One, I think what Councilman Brown's talking about is the budget workshop starting. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we the, the the caveat to all that is you've got you're going to have a significant uh, budget amendment for the budget year you're currently in that I'm going to need more info, which I'm getting ready to get into you in item nine, uh, so we can get the budget year we're living without uh, the proper funds and the proper earnings. So anyway, there, there's plenty to that. Well, my, my, my concern is, is that, <clears throat> and I know things change, but under leaderships and stuff, but I'm just used to having budget meetings with the chairperson and the co-chairperson, and, and we kind of hash things out that needs to be looked at and where we're going to move this from that, and then it comes to the council. Um, and, and we haven't had a budget committee meeting since probably October. Might have been. Or not October, but maybe November. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So that's 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 where I'm coming from. Right. Sounds good. Okay, we'll shoot for me. Uh, any council comments? Just have um, a couple. Uh, first of all, I had the opportunity to go over to Penny Farms for their farm day, and it was really quite a nice event, and they had a concert and so on, sort of along the lines, Dan, that I think you're thinking of. Uh, I had a chance to meet the mayor, a very interesting guy. Uh, and, we start, and we started talking about good old Forum 6, which I think you guys are aware of. And I don't know what the stat. I think there's some litigation to maybe do away with that. I don't know what the stat is. Out of Orlando, I think. Um, but but assuming that the, it sticks, uh, probably you might want to have a little workshop to kind of figure it out because there are some pretty hefty penalties if you if you don't get it in or if you you know it's, it's a lot of paperwork. But in any event, I, I did get to meet the mayor. We talked about Form Six. Uh, second, second thing, uh, I really appreciated working with this Dream Team. This is a great, great group over the last 10 years. It's, it's, it's been quite a good experience. I, I've enjoyed it. So I thank you. And I thank you. <laughs> That's it? That's it? That's it? Well, you'll be missed, Steve. Well, thank you. So we... We went uh, 
I'm going to speak for the mayor now. Oh, okay. May. Okay. We went to the Florida League of Cities and we had a, a dinner in Green Cove. Uh -huh. And there was a presentation on the Florida Cities. Yeah, it's it's really convoluted. It the is. instructions. There, were, there weren't a lot of smiles going around. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I've got a file one too, even though I'm leaving. Yeah, you do. That's yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Um, I would like to say something about some behavior issues. And um, it's been brought to my attention by three of the city employees that there has been others on other commissions that have come in and demanded that some of the city employees do drop everything they're doing and do something. I, that won't be tolerated. I, I will. I will bring. I will face you face to face. If you have a problem with somebody in, in the city, then you need to. You know, you need to come to me because I, I won't. I won't tolerate the city employees being bullied, and that's what I'm going to call it because that's what it was. I won't tolerate anybody that works in the, in city hall being bullied. If it happens again, I'll call you. I'm not afraid. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. Dan? Um, first, um, Mr. Hart, it's been a pleasure. I've known you for 10 plus years now, and um, I want to just thank you for your service. Well, and thank you for yours. Yes. Uh, we're going to miss you. Thank you. Um, and sadly, I will not be able to be here on April 19th nor will I be able to be here on June 3rd. So just as a heads up, I have personal things I just have to take care of. Okay. And so I will be missing those two events. That's all. Okay. Mr. Brown? I'll just read, address the, um, the meetings that I've had with the, the manager and, the, and uh, staff going down to the creeks and keeping an eye on all that cleanup and stuff. <clears throat> The other thing was um, I had the um, opportunity to go to Sunrise Service yesterday morning and to hear the great Dr. Farmer. Um, he's retired, he's 80 some years old, and he was the, the pastor that they, the Kiwanis had chose. To, to, um, Dr. Farmer was real instrumental in helping fund lamb, get monies and stuff for lamb, for their building and stuff. So um, that was great to see a lot of people that came out for that. And the great thing is to be able to see water out there in Lake Geneva instead of mud um, when we had it several years ago. Um, the other thing is, um, Steve, you've been a great friend. You were my vice mayor for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you, you jumped in and helped me when I got sick a couple times and took care of some, even did the clay day, I think, one time for me. <laughs> and I actually had to wear your hat for about four months. If I yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> but um, it's been an honor Thank to you. serve with you. And, and for you and to likewise, Tony. And, um, and we served in Kiwanis a lot and stuff. And um, I'll be there Saturday because you got a good band. One o'clock. Yes, sir. Be there at B Square. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I've been uh, pretty busy. It's, uh, I've attended, uh, gosh, so many luncheons. It's crazy. Um, went to the uh, also the Keystone Heights uh, High School Veterans Breakfast that they had, which was a really beautiful ceremony that they gave. And uh, Vice Mayor was with me there, and it was just really something to talk to those gentlemen and just to, you know hear their experiences. And it, the kids did a great job with the presentation and the show. Also attended the. Uh, Clay County's fair opening, uh, which was a lot of people there. It's going to be pretty amazing. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, what they have planned. Uh, went to the economic development luncheon and then also to the Pace Girls Empowerment Luncheon. It's great to go to these things because a lot of the same stakeholders within the county are there and have presence. And it gives me an opportunity to talk to them in a, in a more private setting. Um, just ask them a few questions that I may not have the opportunity, like during a council meeting or at any other time. So I do think it's important for us to attend these whenever we can. Also got to come watch Charlie do a great job with the Lake Erie Prosperity Business Partners uh, meeting the other night. 
put on by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, did an outstanding job, Charlie. Very proud to have you represent our city right now. Uh, coming in April, um, we're going to have a visit with PAC 187 with uh, the PAC leader, Mr. Leverett, uh, Vika Leverett, who's going to bring his boys here and girls, I think, 30 of them, with their family members to learn about civic education. So we're going to host them here, I think, on April 9th at 6 o'clock. And uh, looking forward to that. I haven't done that before, and he's super excited about it. I uh, want to um, end my comments with saying, congratulations, Steve. <laughs> I mean, I've only been in this less than a year, and I honestly don't know how anybody does it for as long as you all have done it, and Tony and Dan or whoever else. I mean, it's been a great people, learning experience. I had good experience. people to work with. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I think we have a, a great team here. You bet. I think we all respect each other, and mm -hmm. we're all very creative. Uh, but you know, you're the first, you and Ladonna, the first people I met when I moved mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Ladonna comes knocking on my door. Hey, <laughs> hey, she's walking in my driveway. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm in the Heritage Commission. <laughs> and and I want to thank you for the the work you did have done in the Heritage Commission, and of course, Christine. Um, Ladonna and I had a hand in getting that started in what, 2008. It's, it's, it's gratifying to see how well it's doing. Yeah. How well it's doing, yeah. And I mean, you've, you've really given a lot to the city on many levels, and uh, we just have to be so proud to have someone like you as a citizen here. Well, for sure. and, uh, it's a very, very special thing. Well, I do I may, have something. I may pop up again somewhere. You want that? Yeah, we can give it to him. And I know you guys can make your comments too. so that people at home know if wait can you walk up to the mic and pull it the other way oh. so that people at home know what the flag says <laughs> on behalf of the city of keystone heights we want to present to steve hart for your years of dedicated service to the city of keystone heights your principal leadership has made a huge impact city councilman from march 2014 to April 2024. Congratulations. You guys don't really want to see an 80-year-old man cry, so I won't, but I really, I really do appreciate this. This, this is a very meaningful. I'm going to find a spot on the wall when I get home tonight. So thank you. in the picture. <laughs> 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 So I wanted to uh, wrap up and share with the public, I think I've shared with all, all the council, just um, what kind of is driving uh, me each day, what I'm keeping my eye on. And there's a whole lot of things, but there's other things uh, such as the water levels in the lake and making sure these creeks are clear and the culverts are cleaned out and trees are cleaned out that when I get uh, an opportunity to have an input on that then a lot of these other things that we've discussed which are worthy ideas come down on the list till I make sure that there's nothing else I can do that day on the water um, issues uh, corner property same thing I've heard loud and clear uh, from the five of you on these two issues um, I've, I've talked with you guys some and I updated the uh, group the other night uh, on the need to modernize, modernize and standardize and prioritize practices around here and to give you the kind of professional city staff that uh, you're, is going to be required to do half of 
the many things you've listed just enough. Um, I, I'm going to create with you or for you an organizational chart, job descriptions, a salary schedule, um, things that uh, have not been either done or updated in a very, very many years. And they, you know, you just have to get to 2024. I think the last personnel policy manual I could find here was 2009. So we're, we're going to focus on what it takes to go forward. All that will come to you with your approval and a price tag, which will be in a, a budget amendment for this year. Um, we've already hit the council meeting room uh, discussion. So I'm going to give you, Mr. Brown, a packet. Each one and pass it down. And I'm going to hit for you very quickly some of the uh, things that uh, will provide us some immediate structure uh, moving forward. And Steve, you can hand yours a speedy on the way out. yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I put the council meeting dates. Um, the, the, they're all the first Monday except for July. We're going to pull off the 4th of July on Thursday. We're going to need all hands on deck focused on that. I would propose we move that July meeting to later in the month and, and just not make ourselves uh, where we can't function that that week or two leading up. And not to jump in, but you know, something you do around the holidays anyway is you can cancel the meeting because instead of having one mid-month, you'll have enough things going on, just add it to your August meeting. I'm all for less meetings. Y'all are good with that? Yeah. Yeah. Especially if people are on a vacation in the summer. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go from June 3rd to August 5th. Okay. Unless y'all tell me different. Um, I can't stress enough, I stressed it in my interview uh, to even uh, come into this job. You have a small city staff, you have a million dollar reoccurring budget, so we have to prioritize work. The most logical way that um, I think you should go about that is creating a strategic plan. Now my background is different from every one of these backgrounds that's on the council when you talk about a strategic plan. Abbott had one, the Air Force had one, the Army, the school board had one, Navy base had one. So we've all got like a different idea. So on the 10th, um, the gentleman I have uh, scheduled to come speak at 10 a.m. on April 10th, um, and we could boot that on to April 25th if that, that date wasn't working, but I, I think I've communicated with all, all of you on the April 10th date. Yeah. Okay, is to put us all on the same sheet of music doesn't obligate you to even do a strategic plan or to do it with Dr. Saviak or what, but I think my goal for about a two hour block of instruction is to come away around noonish that day with everybody agreeing to what we want a strategic plan to be able to look like, what it's going to function, and then how it's going to drive the work, and then we have to build it. And it might be six, nine, 12 months to build out or we might just pick our top priorities and have an initial strategic plan while we're refreshing our comp plan, which was last updated, I think, in 2011. Um, so anyway, uh, any questions on that? The, the rest of this, um, again, I don't know what I will know by June about uh, the lakes and what parks and permits that Department of uh, Environmental Protection for uh, Fish and Wildlife um, but that, that's on the top of my list, um, and I've heard from you that you want to complete projects that are already started. I would just be totally open. I don't know what the streetscape even scope of work is. I have some pretty renderings in the conference room about it. Um, but if you did want to complete things that were started before we moved on the other, to other things, um, then that would be worthy of the next couple of workshops. Uh, the Christmas one um, might need to be much earlier than October. So what I would ask you to do on the April 10th workshop is just review this. And if you guys come back and tell me different workshop topics or different dates, then, then I can adjust fire, so to speak. But th this is what I'm seeing as your immediate need, need to get done kind of items. Um, next item in your packet. Uh, 
Vice Mayor Thompson asked, I think my first meeting seated here, who do I call about what? And literally, I've had to go back and live my job description a little bit. The clerks had to live hers a little bit. And um, so if, if you have questions about any of the things under my name, then call me about them. And I'll put some more cop copies back here for the public. And all, all the things that really take the thought and the detail are in the clerk's wheelhouse. Uh, planning and zoning, the minutes, the meeting agendas. I play in her sandbox some only because you hold me as a city manager accountable for everything that happens or fails to happen. So the way the agenda templates look, when they're published, all that bleeds back into uh, public input, public trust. Uh, so I will steer that, but I will not be typing it out and putting it in the World Wide Web and those other things. Um, any questions on that? All right. Thank you. So you guys have come here um, with a lot of agenda items tonight. And we may need to set a policy on shaping an agenda that wouldn't exceed an hour and a half, two hours, two hours, something like that. And you guys come up with great ideas that will require staffing. And I don't want you to waste time talking about things that are not feasible or just things that you're going to need our staff input on. So I absolutely copied this off of the Clay County School Board website. We put this Agenda Plus template in years ago. And you might not have the answer. You might not have every one of these items on everything that you want to discuss. But I'd like to send you out of here with this. We'll email you the template so you can type in it in Word. So if you know in June you want to speak about something, the sooner you get us the information, the more staffing we can put behind it. We can go find if there's room in the budget. We can forecast to the Budget and Finance Committee if monies need to be moved around. We can... We can just give you a better product, and if you flip that over, it just shows an example. It has nothing to do with the city. It's just uh, the school board. I knew where to go get <coughs> something that I think will help us have more efficient uh, municipal meetings. Thank you. So you're welcome. Mm -hmm. And then this is just in case uh, you forget what I say when I say it. This is what I'm driving on until we have a strategic plan that. Uh, varies or, or takes me off these priorities. Um, just a simple priorities of work list. Um, so with that, I'll entertain any questions. We have to entertain zero. Uh, I just have um, this is where I'm coming from. Um, when I was in charge of large organizations, um, uh, we endeavored to keep all meetings 90 minutes or less, but there were exceptions to that. But the reason that we could do that was I also had a staff that kept track of what I called action items. And so we didn't forget anything. We didn't let, you know, any one of us comes up with something, it was put on that action item list and we tracked it. And we'd set a date and if that date didn't work, we'd set a new date, but we never lost track of it. My fear is that right now, the only input I have to track what's going on is this agenda. I don't have any other method to track anything else. I don't know if anything I've mentioned is making any progress at all. Um, and, and luckily, um, you have uh, met with me on several occasions and I get a feel for it. So I'm feeling much better about that. But um, I would like you to consider an action item list or a projects list or a some way so I could see that, you know, if I have this summer concert series ideas, and, and you kind of have done that here, but my summer concert is not on here. So how do I know that's not being forgotten? So yes. one of my clients actually has a pending business report that is part of the manager's report. And it actually does exactly what you're saying. It tracks things and by consensus of the elected body, you decide to put things on or take things off. So you could have something like that that just tracks that. I, I'm not going to tell the manager how to do it. Oh no no, it's it's right. more a com it's for its county commission. It's a commission tool right. that they use to understand where projects are, and there are times where they decide they want to take things off the list. Yeah, something could be overcome by events. That happens all the time. Um, but 
um, that's I, I expressed to me, we're going to have a long meeting on um, on the Monday night, and I said, yes, we are. Till we get some of these workshops, until we make progress, we are behind, and I don't want things to be forgotten. So if we can find some other way to do it, hopefully our workshops will help clear out things. It sure will. You know, and, and as long as we stay on top of stuff, we should eventually get ahead of things. I mean, the thing is, we all have to realize um, we've had a lot of change in, in not even six months, a mm -hmm. lot of change. Mm -hmm. And um, we have new people everywhere and new staffing, whole brand new city hall employees. Yeah. So there's a lot of moving parts right now. Yeah. And I think, that, I think that our team has got the right uh, support in mind for us mm -hmm. and the right planning. So we, we're going to have to be a little patient as they're trying to tie these things up to help us. And I think they're doing a great it's, job. Yeah. They really do. I just don't want stuff to fall through the cracks and be forgotten. No, I understand. We so. have projects that, that um, Charlie brought up, the streets, the cityscape. We haven't talked about that in forever. Yep. We haven't decided on that. I mean, and I don't. I, I actually forgot about it too. And this was something from for, for a month. I've wanted to consolidate two or three of these and yes. a couple of big yellow notepads on the list. I just haven't got there. But when I but we meet with you, I take lots and lots of notes, and it's all written down. Uh, it's not as organized as I would like it to be. Um, I believe I told you uh, when when you interviewed me that it's not my nature to come in in the first 90 days and start pulling a bunch of levers till I see what's what and what's coming out of the woodwork and uh, we're approaching that mid-March will be or mid-April will be about that 90 day mark and um, I've, I've tried to not take your breath away or the staff's breath away as I built a staff like there was nobody working in this building here except Stephanie today that worked in this building in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe what <laughs> So we're, we need it still with us to support that. Yeah, yeah, but literally, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I will, I will bring all this to you at the space and pace that I can possibly bring to you. Back on the cityscapes, I think we decided to start with the hardscape first, the the the, uh, the brick and whatever. So I think that was a starting point. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that was that, that was the first move, yeah. Well, then, yeah. then we had transition. It's over. Yeah. Well, Alicia gave us a formatted method, Charlie, yeah. that we can all use consistent information as a start, and then open up to a broader, you know. And we may have to go to a couple of workshops a month, Dan, at some point. Yeah, that, nothing but, I handed you is in stone. That's just literally, if we have a workshop, yep. that days of effort on the back end of the workshop and just managing everything that we got going on. So, you know, I propose a, a realistic pace, I think, but we can certainly have further discussion. Appreciate you doing that. And if, since we're all here in the sunshine law and everything like that, um, <laughs> since we have no meeting in July, now we, we've agreed there's no meeting in July, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Perhaps we could move the Christmas workshop to July, since you already have the finance committee meeting in May, If, if all you guys want to scratch all over this and, yeah. and I'll try to compile Just, it at the end of the April 5th workshop, I'll come back to you with a, okay. a proposal for that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Kamado. So, as I was kind of practicing and rehearsing my comments for tonight, I was able to pare them down to about 45 minutes. Oh, for... <laughs> 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 cut, oh, cut off his mic. <laughs> And that's the closest the lawyer's ever going to come to an April Fool's <laughs> show. <so. laughs> no, but Councilman and former Vice Mayor Hart, mm -hmm. to say that it's been a pleasure to work with you is really an understatement. Um, well, as you. fellow attorney, you've provided a lot of very good insight and guidance into Florida statute as well as our local code of ordinances. Um, and, you know, other than Councilman Brown, I think I've been here close to the longest. And I remember when there was no Heritage Commission. So yeah. the fact that that was kind of the brainchild of you and our city and your dedication to public service and seeing what things needed to be done and protected and keep uh, historic homes and places from being bulldozed 
is something that, you know, your brainchild is now commonplace. And I think that's something you should be very proud of. Well, thank you, Rich. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, you've done the one thing that I haven't seen, I don't think any other elected official do, where you introduce a piece of legislation, Councilman Hart will pick an ordinance and he argues vociferously for it and he's, uh, <laughs> argues for his position you gotta and remember i used to do that for a living so I, oh, I, I haven't forgotten but uh, the interesting thing i haven't seen is when it came time for the second vote uh councilman hart goes well you know i i listen to the citizens and they don't want this so i'm voting against it so you actually voted against your own legislation it happens. and that to me is a true testament to your character that you really do listen to the people that you represent and sometimes people get dug in on it being their idea. And for you, your idea was always just for what is the betterment of the citizens of the city. And it's been an honor to work with you. So thank, thank you, Rich. It's been an honor to work with you, too. And that concludes my report. I leave our clerk Ms. Silva? I'm so sorry. Mr. Commando, since we have Mr. Cussler in the audience today, could you clarify his options on when he can swear in or how he can go about that? There's some confusion. So at the conclusion of the election, um, you can swear someone in. Sometimes some governments do it later that night. Um, most people prefer to have a more ceremonial swearing in. Some people will do just a come here, we'll swear you in, and then we'll do a ceremonial one later. So there's a little bit of discretion on how that happens. But as of the Tuesday evening, you are deemed elected. So at that point, we can do the swearing in the next day, the week after. It's really as to when you want to try to hopefully have friends and family come in and um, and actually conduct the ceremony. Yeah, I think the charter is clear on that. Wednesday morning, probably, whatever. So we're talking about two days from now? No, no um, next week. I, no, it's I, I've had second a Tuesday. discussion Tuesday. with Mr. Custer about this today, and if there's no uh, mandate, I think his daughters are coming on May 6th to your next, what would be his first council meeting? We can do it then. So we can we can swear you in privately, and then we can have the public ceremony as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, Councilman Lovendowski, you need to be resworn in as well. I have to be resworn in, okay? Because you're taking a new oath for your new term. So what you're saying then, we would do it on uh, April 9th? Is that right? That Tuesday? You can do the that morning here, and then we'll do the ceremony on oh, the tenth. I'm sorry, the tenth, the Wednesday morning after the. Yes, ma'am. I'm is sorry. That it is. Yeah, just. Yeah, if, and then when his family comes in, do another one for that. We'll purpose. do this part of the May meeting then, okay. if that's if that's acceptable so, to you. If that's what. Okay. We're all going to be here at 10 a.m. on the tenth for our workshop, so we could just start right there and that. I have a appointment on the tenth. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when do you? We're already appointed to maybe in November. Oh, okay, so when do you want to do it? You can just stop by whenever you want, and we can have somebody swear you in. Because on the 9th at 7 p.m. or whenever the polls close, Steve Hart is out. He's no longer part of council. Technically, the, the, the supervisor has to certify the election, or has to call right, the election. So it might be an hour. Or Maybe we can rephrase that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we need you. Sometime after that point in time. Something about old soldiers or something. Yeah, right. They just fade away. Fade away. All right. Okay. Meeting adjourned.